You know, there hasn't really been a movie that I have not, like, really disliked in a while. And this movie is one of those movies that I really did not like. And I'm, I'm happy that Miss Stephanie is talking about this because I need, I need a way to rant about this movie and tie it into my channel. <laughs> because, bro, this is, this is tough, my lord. Bro, a couple things that I don't like. We're talking about Leave the World Behind, okay? If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. This isn't really an ad, but you're just going to tell y'all what this shit is about. <laughs> this movie, Slim, this movie, bro, I don't know if I should start ranting now. You know, I'm going to start ranting now before we start. Hey, bro. A couple things I ain't like about this movie. Julia Roberts was mean as fuck. She was mad paranoid to the point where it was annoying. The open-toed shoes. <laughs> and the ending. The ending. The, the ending. The ending. Bro, dog. Uh, this is probably going to be a two-hour video, so I'm not really going to rant too much about it man so let's uh watch it y'all this is family stranded in vacation home during blackout till two strangers came and claimed they owned the house the obamas produced this or the obamas was a part of this and there's a lot of bro it was a lot of like what's it called like easter eggs and like whistling dog whistling type things the colors of the movie tells that it's very democratic <laughs> Y'all, come, come on, let's go. Let's have a boom and bada bing. Have you ever wanted to watch more videos than the thousands of ones that are already on my channel? Hell yeah. How'd I do that? Huh? Tell me. You know, like the ones that I can't show on YouTube? Uh, I, I, I got you. I have a Patreon with three tiers. This is what you will get per tier. Both of you like to read it. Honestly, I love it. We be going crazy on the Patreon, but... I'm going to let you be the judge of that. So y'all go ahead and check out the Patreon and let me know what you think. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting. And thank you for everything. Now, let's get back to the video. One of the reasons why I'm kind of mad is because, like, I'm talking to this girl, right? I'm just let y'all know. I'm talking to this girl and I'm doing, like, requests and stuff. And every time I watch a bad movie, I get kind of sad because I feel like she ain't going to talk to me no more. She ain't going to see this, so it's fine. But, dog... <laughs> this is the second movie that has not been up to par to my standards that are kind of making me feel bad about my choices. The first one was The Mother with uh, Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> and now it's this. <laughs> Good, thank the Lord I'm saving it with these other, uh, you know, recommendations. But God damn, bro, like, what the fuck? Sorry. I promise I'm not drunk. I'm actually very sober right now. And I have water. So this is going to be a sober rant. So... <laughs> Let's go. About a boom, about a bang. Welcome to this week's Bacon a Mystery Let's Bacon go. a Murder episode. Okay, listen, I actually had a completely different thing planned for this episode, but this movie was everywhere. Everywhere I yeah. turned around, we were out in public in New York City. I see posters mm -hmm. for this movie. I see an mm -hmm. mm, sorry. ad mm -hmm. for this. Bro, I was trying to watch this movie, right? And everything on TikTok was something about this movie. Like the shit, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why I actually chose this movie was like the scene with the Teslas, because I kind of want to buy a Tesla, but now I'm not going to buy a Tesla because what the hell is that scene? Goddamn. Get in the car. Clay, get in the car. Clay, get in the car. There's no one driving. <laughs> Oh my god. This movie. I see TikTokers talking about this movie. There was like a a thing where Teslas were recalled mm -hmm. recently, right? Yeah. And all the comments are like, leave the world behind. Leave the world behind. What? Leave the world behind. This like, bro, movie has been every single god place damn. that I've fucking turned, and I just needed movie. to know what it was about. Bullshit. This movie is actually based on a novel by Ruman Alam. I hope uh. I'm pronouncing that right. And here's the interesting thing. It's executive know. produced by Barack and Michelle Obama. Huh. Yeah, huh. and huh. it's kind of political. It's kind of intense. Ain't no kind of Stephanie. Are they to Stephanie ain't no kind of. It's political as hell. The damn, all that blue. <laughs> it was so much blue. It was too much. Blue. They kept wearing blue the whole time. <laughs> Be little executive producers, or are they trying to tell us something? They I are. No, honestly, even after watching the movie, no thoughts in here. That's the really? problem. I mean, I got a lot of thoughts. This is one of the first movies that I've watched in a really long time where I could not make up my mind about it. And at first, when I was done watching it, I just took it as surface value. And I was like, oh, I guess it's a good thriller. But I mean, it's fine, but... Then I saw these TikToks dissecting every part of this movie. People were scanning hidden QR codes Bruh. that were in this movie. People 
Bruh, man, this shit is not even that deep. In my, bro, in my opinion, this shit isn't really that deep. I'm going to be honest. First off, this video is going to be long, so get your popcorn and everything because I am I have some shit to say. Bro, this movie is not that deep. I watch a lot of these type of end of the world type movies and I used to get scared, but now I'm just like, bro, at the end of the day, it's like if some shit happens, if you keep it a stack, if some shit happens, we really can't be prepared. We really cannot be prepared. You know what I'm saying? Like we can't. And people are over dissecting this shit like this shit is like they clone Tyrone or something where it's obvious it's telling you what the hell is happening. In this movie, motherfucker, what it, it's just like what are, what are we going to do if we if we got a cyber attack from another country? Like we're fucked cuz we're all we're all we're all glued to these and Wi-Fi. I I can I can I can't even do my job really if I don't have any Wi-Fi. When I took a break and tried to touch grass, I still kind of needed Wi-Fi. You know? This isn't really one of those deep ass movies that just that needs a that needs a think piece. Everybody just wants to sound smart. Like nigga, no, it's not it's not really that no, conspiracy theories. Y'all ain't been on TikTok long enough to know these conspiracy theories are late. Huh? Sorry. I'm not sorry. I hate this movie. <laughs> People were zooming in, finding all these Easter eggs in this movie. It was absolutely unhinged. I think I need like a whole book club to have someone decipher this movie for me because I can't make up my mind. It's crazy. It's crazy. Stephanie, come so on. with that being said, let's go. Let's get started. Let's do it. So the story starts with the Stanford family who quite literally embody their last name. Like when I say the Stanford family, I feel like you've got a picture of an American family in your mind. This family, in my opinion, I believe that this family is like uh, depicting Joe Biden's family. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, these are going to be very unhinged hot takes. So <laughs> prepare. Yeah, I think this, this embodies like Joe Biden's family. That's exactly this family. Do you know what I'm saying? All American family that does pretty well. But they still talk about how they're stressed out about work and budget cuts. Mm -hmm. But like you feel like they're not actually stressed out about it mm -hmm. because they live in a brownstone in New York City. Exactly. They also have this really blue ass room. It's like the first scene of this movie. Apparently the color blue is somewhat symbolic later in this movie. So like keep it in mind. But every surface of their master bedroom is freaking blue. It's blue nasty. Walls, blue it's ceiling, nasty. Blue. It's Everything. too much blue. The family consists of parents, Amanda and Clay Stan. Ethan fucking Hawk. <laughs> and I'm Julia gonna give Roberts. you my first impressions on them. And like, don't hold me to this, okay? Because first impressions can change. But from what I gather, Clay seems a lot more chill. Mm -hmm. He seems very laid back. Mm -hmm. But almost kind of to the point of being useless. Yeah. Is like how laid back he seems. Yeah. Like he seems very, he seems like the cool parent at surface value. But it just seems like he genuinely doesn't care about his kids that much. No, I wouldn't say that. Because no, no, Stephanie. I wouldn't say it's just Clay. Because fucking, fucking Julia Roberts keeps losing her fucking daughter the whole time in the movie. There's a fucking blackout. Sorry. There's a blackout, right? There's a whole blackout. There's a whole blackout. Y'all don't know what the fuck is going on. And you keep losing your daughter and son. They're always walking in the fucking woods. Why? Are you, it's a blackout and you keep losing your kids. Of course, Clay is like like laid back. But Julia Roberts is paranoid as fuck. I don't know her name in this movie. So I'm calling her Julia Roberts until Stephanie says the name in this movie. Dog, if there's a blackout and you're that paranoid, why do you keep losing your children? Like, you keep talking, where's my daughter? Help me find my daughter. And then the daughter comes home and she's just, for some reason, over it, just canoodling with Mahershala Ali and shit. Like, oh my God. Like, yeah. maybe he does, but, like, not really. Amanda gives me a move to New York City from a small town Fucking and mean. needs to prove herself is, like, crazy career woman type vibe. I don't know. No, she's just mean as shit, bro. It's like, she was mean to the point where it was like, bro, like, why are you here? Like, no. She just, like, has this whole monologue at the start of the movie. She's I bizarre. fucking hate people. She's giving manic pixie girl, but in her 50s. She's played by Julia Roberts. <laughs> I love her. But the opening scene is Clay waking up in the morning in this blue blue ass room and amanda is already like making a ruckus in the closet stephanie's She's room is blue too amanda wh what are you doing honey she's like i'm leaving you 
No, I'm kidding. She's like, <laughs> well, I couldn't sleep and it's been a hell of a year for us. And I feel like all I do is work every day and I don't even realize that that's what I'm doing. And at this point, she's like aggressively stuffing clothes into a suitcase. And then you're constantly anxious from work and all these budget cuts. So I booked us a beautiful house by the beach to go stay at today. It's on the water. And it was cheap. Today. This man is barely awake and he's finding out they're going on vacation today. Like that's like that's nuts. Like that's actually nuts. Why the fuck are you It's like our vlogs? Yeah. yeah. Oh <laughs> today. Bro, I, I can't wait till I'm actually like in that type of timing to actually like take vacations. Cause taking a vacation like the same day sounds so bizarre to me. It sounds so bizarre because I, I, I don't know. Maybe I, I don't know. Hey, but you are Amanda. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and then Clay is like, wait, 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 wait. Are you packing right now? Yeah. I thought I'd get a jump on it. Wait, Amanda, honey, I don't understand. I respect it. W when did you rent a house and what for? Today. I figured if I made the reservation and packed our bags, it would eliminate most of the reasons to say no. She zips up the suitcase. She's ready. Eliminate most of the reasons to say no. Damn. I would at least like to have a choice, Amanda. Fuck. <laughs> Ready. Clay's still in bed. The details for the house are printed on your nightstand next to your coffee. The kids are still asleep and I haven't started packing for them yet, but I think that they're going to be really excited about this. This dynamic Amanda's is Amanda's giving me. control freak. She no, will want you to bro. do something, but then she will do it instead before you get around to it. it like, I love my grandma so much. But, um, like, bro, like, it's, it's very overbearing. I'm not going to lie. Just off the ripper. It's just over fucking bearing. One thing I do like about this movie is like kind of like the shots that is like shot. Like there's a couple shots where like the subject is like here and they're talking and it's like a wide it's like a it's like a wide angle, but they're talking and it's just so much space. I kind of like that only because it looks chaotic as fuck and then it'll just have like a moving camera like it's a like it's an Mnet performance or something. Like it's it's movies it's six in the morning and she's already made weekend plans for every single person in the family exactly. and she's packing. It's crazy. But Clay, he just kind of takes it like a champ. He's giggling. He's shaking his head. It feels like he's used to Amanda doing this. This is his wife. Okay, but Amanda, honey, help me out here. I mean, why today? Well, Amanda suddenly gets serious. She walks over to the window. Well, when I couldn't fall back asleep this morning, I came over here to the window to watch the sunrise. And I saw all these people starting their day with such tenacity, such verve, all in an effort to make something of themselves, make something of our world. I felt so lucky to be a part of that. But then I remembered what the world is actually like. And, oh my fucking goodness gracious. and I came to a more accurate realization She's like literally doing this. It's a monologue. No, it's not real a shit. Narration. Bro. She's doing this. Yes. She turns her head to her husband. I came to the realization I f hate people. She didn't even turn to her husband. Nigga, she turned to the camera. Dog, the camera was this fucking close. Let me zoom in. Hold on. I'm going to zoom in. Can I zoom in? Zoom. 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 Keep zooming. She was like this, bro. It. She was closer too. She was like. She was like this. She said, I wish it would, the, the, fuck. I'm gonna zoom, wait, hold on. Wait, no, 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 we're gonna zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out. Just, hopefully I'll be able to zoom in like this when I edit this. She was like, she turned, the fuck, dog scared the shit out of me. She was like, she just, she was looking and then she turned to the camera. She turned to me. She was looking at me. She was like, I fucking hate people. Like, Nigga, huh? <laughs> like, did all this monologue just be like, psych, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> okay. <Same. laughs> you are Same. at the <laughs> So they move fast. The whole family is packed in the car. Clay, the dad, is driving. Amanda, the mom, who is again. You know, be young, right? You don't have to act your age or anything. But she's constantly giving like Vampire Diaries Twilight vibes. <laughs> she's staring out the window with her wired headphones in, talking on the phone, sunglasses. And she says, leave the world behind. Oh my That's God, I hated that shit so much. Why are you saying the title of the movie in the title? Oh God. That's what it said on the rental listing, at least. She's on the phone with her friend. Fuck that oh, rental listing. Hampton, right? 
no, no, it's a cute little town. Actually, I think they call it a hamlet. That's how cute it is. It's a lot closer to the city and still very far from, well, everyone. The woman on the phone does not care. She just wants Amanda to answer some more work questions. <laughs> it seems like all Amanda does is work, but it's not like her husband and her kids even really want her attention to begin with. So Clay is listening to music, <laughs> windows down, driving. It's he dynamic. gives me a stereotypical dad. He's wearing a Hawaiian shirt type of dad. My dad used to wear two shirt. kids, Archie, teenage boy, Archie. and Rose, who just turned 13, they're in the back. And Archie looks at Rose. Did you just fart? <laughs> Archie, come on, let your sister be. Well, no, Dad. I don't care if she farted. I care if she lies about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rose just ignores her teenage brother, does not even listen, okay? Wait, she how, looks... how, how many boys and girls? One boy, Archie, and one girl, Rose. Okay. And Rose is arguing. 13. Archie is older. Maybe like 16. Who's older? Archie. Archie Archie's, Archie's like Archie's 16. Rose is like 13. Okay. Yeah, and Archie's giving typical kind of like brainless teen boy type yep. vibes yep. rose seems a little bit more sophisticated but she's 13 she's the youngest she i'm not gonna talk shit about rose but like that shit with the with friends is i'm like bro i've never watched friends so to anybody who's watched friends is friends really like that like is it really like is it likes that she is an iPad kid, though. She has this giant iPad that's in, like, one of those padded silicone. They're, like, <laughs> the honor box. they put on the kids. And she's watching Friends on her iPad. And when it starts buffering mid-ride, she's slamming her finger down trying to get it to play again. And when it doesn't, she rips out her earbuds, crosses her arms, and stares out the window. Like, she doesn't even, she doesn't even like, refresh or, like, open the app back up. She just gives up. Type, come on, iPad kid. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Dad, when we get back to the city, can you take me to the coffee shop and friends? Uh, honey, I don't think that's real. It's just a set. <laughs> Our girl Rose is now staring out the window, super depressed. But keep this in mind, because this Friends TV show is going to stick around yeah, for it the is. entire movie. The entire movie. movie. But you want to know something odd. Side what? note. Julia Roberts, the woman playing her mom, was in an episode of Friends. So oh, did really? she just not see her mom in that episode of Friends? Hey. Anyway, <laughs> our girl Rose. Is Continuity. We love the fuck out of that. Staring out the window. Teenage angst at its... You might as well have Archie watch fucking... Uh, what's that movie? Training Day. Haven't watched Training Day. But, uh, Training Day is my favorite movie. Finest, and she reads the freeway exit sign. Exit 76, point comfort. Exit lane only. <sighs> and we are welcomed into part one of Let's the go. movie. There's five parts. Five. Part one, the house. The house. The family pull up. It's a pretty ass house. I honestly, love that house. California style house. I don't yeah. know what I was expecting. Maybe some sort of cottage, but this house is giving LA. That's what I'm saying, bro. I watched, I saw this shit. I was like, this is on the outskirts of New York. I'm not really a New Yorkian. Like, I don't really know too much about New York like that, but I never seen no house like this in the outskirts of New York. It's a modern farmhouse. I mean, love the look, honestly. A farmhouse Soft in oak wood flooring, wood details on the walls, lots of sunlight, uh, windows. It's bright, it's clean, lovely. open concepts, yes. lighting glass doors, indoor, outdoor living, perfectly manicured lawn. Mm -hmm. I sound like a realtor, but it is beautiful and it's very, very clean, you know, and I don't know if it's because it's a rental home or a vacation home, but there's like no character in the house. All the art, random sculptures of who knows what, <laughs> abstract ink blot art. It's pretty, though. Yeah. And the kids, being kids, they're ready to jump in the pool. They're busy. And Amanda's already heading into town to grab some groceries. So, like, they're they're planning to stay here the whole weekend. Mm. And just to give you an idea, the market that she's going to, like, just to give you an idea of how small this town is, it's like Trader Joe's, but even more cottagey. <laughs> and we see something. And I don't know why Amanda thinks something weird about it. But me watching a thriller movie, I'm like, what does this mean? Amanda's loading the groceries into the back of her SUV. And there's this man. It's Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Plays a man named Danny. Kevin He's dressed Bacon. in a plaid shirt. He's got this crazy beard. And also, he got a, he got a cowboy's hat on. In New York. Can't trust him. <laughs> it's like that. He's hauling just like cases of water bottles and canned goods into his truck. 
He doesn't even smile mm-hmm. when he makes eye contact with Amanda. He just keeps loading water bottles. And he's literally looking at her like, what the f*** are you looking at? Doomsday when Amanda prepper. gets back, she makes no mention of the water bottle hoarding man. Because maybe he just likes to hoard water bottles. Or like he doesn't come to the store often. <laughs> maybe he's thinking too deep into it. Maybe she's thinking too deep into it. Maybe I'm thinking too deep into it. So she did feel like, oh, is he prepping for something type of vibe? Yeah, she was like staring at wow. him. And he looks back at her like, what? It was weird. <laughs> so she tells Clay, honey, the Wi-Fi password is Novella. The owner must be one of those like cyber security guys. Oh, I get it now. I just got it. Wait, I don't get it. Oh, she said it's a Novella. I thought she meant the password is Novella, but she's saying the password is that long. So he ah, must be... I didn't get it either. Yes, he must be a cyber security guy. Oh, I just got it too. <laughs> 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 so she puts a pack of cigarettes on the kitchen. I'm going to be honest. I didn't catch that. I thought it was like an actual like Novella. Because when I thought of it, I was like, tell a Novella? Like, why are you... What? Like, huh? <laughs> ...table where Clay is. And her husband is like... They're not mine. They're not mine. I swear they're not mine. Just start geeking. I bought them. I know you like to sneak here and there, and I figured we're on vacation. Why not? I want you to have a good time, you know? Just no, because, like, I just, I like, I like how she was, like, relax. As if, like, not five minutes later, she's going, she's, like, ripping her teeth out with this, oh, my God. So long the kids see you. Both Amanda and Clay are smiling, so it seems like they have a good relationship. And Amanda leans in to give him a kiss, but it's like the quickest peck on the lips you'll ever see. And she keeps her eyes open the whole time. And she turns to walk away from him, but he tries to grab her arm and he pulls her in. And he's like, oh, hey, hey, hey. you know, I got another idea for a good time. Hmm? And Amanda's whole smile completely drops. She looks serious. She rips back her arm and just like walks off. So immediately weird weird they're weird they're not a loving parent couple we don't know what they are they're cordial they seem okay but there's something to brew in yeah clay still calls after her maybe the whole family lather themselves up in sunscreen and they make their way to the beach and it's pretty quiet but there's still like a few people lounging it's a here dirty there beach too huh? it's not dead but it's definitely not like busy season yeah. and the parents are setting up the spot the blankets the towels chairs umbrella the whole nine yards archie's texting his girlfriend taylor but the minute the minute a hot girl walks by <laughs> drooling doing 180s breaking his neck <laughs> just to watch her leave okay <laughs> And Rose, she's the only one that seems to be more in the moment. Archie's texting his girlfriend, looking at any other girls in bikinis. I believe the dad is like also on his phone. The mom, Amanda, is reading. And Rose is just staring out into the ocean. Just looking. And there's a giant boat it's in the water. Oil it looks like the size of a cruise ship. That motherfucker was big. It's getting closer. And the mom says, what, what is it, honey? The ship. And the dad says, oh, yeah, she's a beaut. Looks like an oil tanker. Must be must be a port around here. I read. This pissed me off, too, because everybody on that damn. This talking? piece in the Atlantic that says New York has one of the largest natural harbors on the planet. Conversation over. Yep. Like the family doesn't really like to they talk to each other. Like it's crazy. Clay and Archie end up napping on their towels. Amanda, the mom, is reading on her stomach. And you see Rose, who seems like she's in a trance, just staring out into the water. I'll be staring at that shit, you too. Okay, Rosie? Mom, I think the ship is heading towards us. Like, yeah, this shit's getting what bigger, that, bro. She doesn't respond. <clears throat> Amanda looks up, and the boat that is motherfucker. practically on their lap. And it's not, <laughs> yes, going, bro. It's not even honking. It's just quietly coming closer and closer like, to the shore. Bro. And for some- Like, fool. Like, bro, why the fuck? Dog, it was... Okay, so when you see this, this oil tanker, right? The shit is like all the... It's like a little dot. It's like a, it's like a little dot. It's like right here, right? It's like right here because it's far away. Five seconds later, the ship is like right here. I'm like, dude, why are y'all still sitting there? Why are people taking pictures of this big ass boat? Y'all want to die, right? Y'all want to die? Y'all want to die? Some natural selection reason, nobody is moving. Exactly. They're all just like, yeah, I mean, it's going to stop, right? Yeah. They're all standing there with their hands on their hips like some Home Depot dads. And Amanda, she immediately starts shaking her husband's leg. Like, wake up, wake up. Clay. Huh? Huh? Clay. He looks up. Wow, it's getting close, huh? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? First off, when the shit was getting closer and closer, there was like this little, t- there was like two people in the front of the boat. You know how like when the, <laughs> you know how like when like something like washes up on shore and like the sand comes with it? The two, this is like, there was like the sand, it was washing up on shore and all the shit coming with the boat 
kept like going. And it was like two people right there. And they waited till the last fucking minute to run to the left. So y'all want to die. Huh? Y'all want to die? I guess y'all just want to die. Like what? <laughs> you think that's a problem? <laughs> like what? Nah, come on. It's got to stop. It's got to. Bro, what would you do? I'm leaving. Bro, I immediately Fuck. move. Yeah, like when you what? saw it on, in the, on the screen? Oh, I immediately move. You would have ran. Yeah. Yes. I don't like, think did I it look that alarming? Yes. It did. I don't think I would have ran. I don't think I would have sprinted. I think I would have gradually, slowly grabbed all my things and walked away in time because I just, even the anxiety. Yeah. Why would I? I can't So it relax. looks like it's going to hit you. It's Bro, it's like right in the middle, dude. It's like streamlined. It's streamlined, and people are just watching this shit. It's the only thing out in the ocean. It's like the only there's no fish, there's no sharks, there's no dolphins, there's no anemones washing up. It's just boat, just just boat. Like what? head on to the shore. Okay, and the boat is huge as fuck. Like, have you seen a cruise ship in person? Have Biggest you ever stood shit. next to a cruise yeah, ship? It's like it's, a, but, but it's an oil but tanker. It's like an oil tanker. Yeah. So it's probably even bigger. Like one of those shipping container type level of ships. Oh, yeah. So it's like coming to them and there's yeah. nobody's. Is there other people? Yeah, and they're all like hands on their hips. Oh, oh, it's, a, oh it's a boat. Oh. Yeah, there's okay. a lot of apparently symbolism. I don't know. You can go down multiple rabbit holes. People Some people are say stupid. it's just a movie scene. Some people say like the <laughs> ship's name is like White Lion and like White Lion means A, B, C, and D. I'm not too intelligent to follow all these rabbit holes, right? But mm. anyway, Clay is like, nah, come on. <laughs> it's got to stop. It's got to, right? They look at each other and they're like, oh, hell no. They wake up Archie. They grab a few of their things and they just start booking it. They have to leave most of their stuff, but otherwise they were pretty safe. They could have. They could have just. I'm oh, sorry. They. They could have just like you know, done that when the oil tanker was like seventy five meters away instead of two meters away. <laughs> run to the other side of the shore, <laughs> and the ship ends up beaching. It ends up literally coming into the sand, throwing sand around. People are getting buried in sand. Nobody dies. It, it doesn't appear that anybody dies, but it was a shit show, and it was. It was weird. It was That's a ship fuck. Show. <laughs> <laughs> the boat didn't even make a single noise, though. It didn't alert anyone. It just beached. It was weird. All the beachgoers, they start heading out, and the family see a police officer directing the traffic. Like, come on, this way, this way. And the dad is like, excuse me, officer, this do you way, know what's way. happened? There's been a number of these groundings up on the coast. Something to do with the navigation system. Sorry, guys. I need you guys to keep it moving. Come on, come on, come on. And he just ushers them along. You know what's crazy? I, f I kind of find it interesting what would actually happen. I feel like this is actually what would happen if, like, an actual, like, blackout happened. Like, people would be like, oh, it's something about a navigation system. And everybody's just slowly like, oh, something's going on. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> like, this is probably one of the reasons why I probably don't like this movie. Because it seems so real. And it seems so bland how real it is. And, like, if some shit goes down, I feel like it would be this bland until everything, until shit just hits the fan. And then everybody's like, oh, my God. Like, a, like it's one of those. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's like, it's like one of those. It's like, oh, this feels real. I'm not entertained. I'm just like, huh. So in the car, everyone is reacting to the situation differently. The two kids, they're watching YouTube videos of the ship beaching. They're like, oh, my God, we just experienced that, right? Amanda, she's sitting there and she goes, wow, that was so strange. Oh, my God. Oh, Starbucks. We should stop for some coffee. She that's, literally that's name drops that company name, okay? Some people thought that was symbolic, too. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Don't come at me. I'm just retelling you a story. I don't know anything. Talk to the Obamas. <laughs> you got questions, you got to email them, okay? Some people said it. And also, I could tell that this was by the Obamas because it was a Joey Badass song. And um, what was the other one? It was another. It was Cool in the Gang. This is very Obama-like. Just, ve just very Barack. Very Barack. It was very interesting. Like, the way that people are reacting to news now. Because, mm. like, that is something that might have been a topic of conversation for hours, if not days, if not weeks. Like, your party story for the rest of your life. But now we just all move on so quickly. And we're like, ooh, coffee. Yep. Right? So, yep. they get home. Clay's already prepping burgers for dinner. Amanda's trying to get on her laptop to read about what the hell just happened on the beach. But the Wi-Fi is down. The TV is down. Mm -hmm. No devices are working. Mm hmm <gasps> Oh my God, yesterday, none of our devices were working. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. Now the kids are back in the pool. 
And what would y'all what would y'all do if like all your devices just turn off, nigga? I'm going to sleep and doing push ups. Well, I'll do push ups first and then go to sleep. Because there ain't shit else to do. Like you literally can't even watch cable. <laughs> And Amanda's just amazed that they're not phased by almost being crushed by a boat on the beach. And before Amanda looks away from the kids, she sees near the bushes a few deer. Mm -hmm. Clay, Clay, come here, look. It's deer. Oh, wow, deer. That's a good omen, you know, seeing deer. At least according to some mythology somewhere. That's actually funny because, like, I grew up and I grew up around hella deer. It was always deer in, in my backyard. So I guess, I guess omens for life, huh? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that night, the kids fall asleep early and the couple are playing Jenga on the dining table while they're getting drunk. Lovely. And here's what I'm picking up. Clay has a job that he's passionate about. He's a professor, but Amanda English probably professor. doesn't care about it. She's the breadwinner. She doesn't even seem to think that Clay's job is really that serious. Like she it's bro, the, that, the dynamic is weird. I'm not going to lie to you cuz if my, bro, I'm not that's so fucked up to me. Like why are you like why are you belittling my job? Like bitch, you married me. Why the fuck you belittling? Like, I'm an English professor. Okay, so the fuck what? You wake, wake all this money. Nigga, see, see, don't make me go on a rant about relationships. Hey, bro, I am. Fuck that. Bro, you know how, you know how, like, that's weird. Like, that's honestly weird. And I'm not trying to make it a gender thing, but, like, even if the guy, like, even if you make more money as the husband, like, don't look down on your partner's job, bro. Like, that shit is odd. Like, why would, like, I don't understand why people would get married and just, like, belittle each other. I don't understand that. It's odd. Like, okay, ooh, ooh, I do YouTube. I make a lot of money. My wife is probably an English professor or something. Or, like, she does a job that makes less money. I'm not about to fucking belittle her and just think her, her, her job ain't shit. Like, of course she has stresses about her job. There's a lot of things that she needs to do about her job. Like... I don't like I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. I'm not trying to come off as like the perfect boyfriend or the perfect husband, but I'm like, bro, like that shit is weird. If my bro, I swear to God, if my wife makes more money than me and she belittles me, nigga, I'm getting divorced. Cause you're not about to belittle me off that. Like you're not doing that. No. <laughs> like who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> Just because you make money? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? I'm not gonna say it because it's illegal. <laughs> I'm going to say it. There's ways to get, like, your partner's money. So, it's not really illegal, but it's, like, conniving. But, like, at the end of the day, bro, don't make, don't, don't belittle your partner. Like, that's pretty much what I was trying to say. Sorry. She's refilling their wine glasses, and Clay says, hey, you remember that student of mine who was published last year? Maria Miller? No? Well, she wants me to write the foreword to her second book. Why did you I mean, fart? you know, she says I'm some kind of huge inspiration. Oh. Uh. I never know if I'm getting through to these kids and then something like this happens. Shh. Did you hear that? There's like a soft I don't like. Noise. I don't like this dynamic. But Clay's like, what? Uh, no. Um, her second book is an exploration of how media serves as both an escape and a reflection. Which is a contradiction that she manages to reconcile, you know? Let me tell you. Amanda is not listening like she to don't give single a, thing she coming don't out give of her husband's fuck, mouth. Bro. She is thinking about that bonk. And there it is again. Shh. Someone's here. What does that sound like? A car door? Like a thud? Yeah. Amanda's calm, though, and she just looks at her husband and says, get a bat. Get a bat. A bat? A bat. Yes. Get a bat. A bat. Why do you think I would have a bat? And then knocking, knocking. Clay gets up and grabs a thick cement piece of artwork. Some, I don't know. It was like a prong structure. This is his I would have got a I knife. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's nothing. He goes to the front door. Amanda goes to grab his phone. There is a man in a white and black suit standing on their porch. It's like, Mahershala not Ali. A tuxedo. He <laughs> looks like he just walked off a GQ cover or came back from some sort of gala. And next to him is a younger woman, probably his daughter. They she look was like pretty. father and daughter age. I'm not going to lie to you. That dynamic there is weird as hell, too. Like, Ruth, she's pretty. I, I like her. She's probably somebody who I would like to be friends with. Until she started opening her mouth, like, she, like a lot of everybody in this movie was just rude. Well, Ruth was m rude. Julia was rude. I mean, Amanda, Amanda and Ruth were rude. Like the way they just talk to each other is like. Mm. And the man turns around. I'm so sorry to bother you. Clay standing there alone. Hello. How, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. I know it's late. A knock at the door way out here. 
we couldn't decide if we should knock at the front door or the side door. And this went on for some time. Mm -hmm. I thought we should try the side door because it has glass and you'd have seen us and known we're just, uh, Amanda shows up and she's got her cardigan wrapped around her like a freshly divorced suburban housewife. <laughs> oh, you must be Amanda. Amanda, Stan Amanda Sanford, right? Clay's now like, why is this hot man in a tuxedo know my wife by name? He I don't know if I'm just like, just irritated. To, hold on, get down. I'm about to rant. Sorry. Hold on. Here you go. Come on. I don't know if I'm just irritated or just like, I'm just thinking too much of it. But like, first things first, Amanda going to say some dumb, some shit, like some microaggressive shit. She's going to say, oh, this is your house. I'm saying like, bro, if, well, Amanda did the, Amanda did the, um, the, the booking, but like, if somebody comes to a house that's not mine, right, and says me by name. The first thing I'm going to think is, oh, they're probably the owner of the house. That's the first thing I would think. Because one, why the fuck would you come over here? Like, what? Like, why would you come to this big ass house with a tuxedo? Y'all look like y'all came from a gala, right? First thing I would think is like, oh, you, you probably own this house. I'm guessing you're the owner of this house. Because first off, how the fuck do you know my name? Two, if you come in to get me, how would you know I was here? Like you ain't you ain't you ain't talk to me at home. You talk to me at some other house. This is probably your house, right? Like, <laughs> like what? Like, huh? He's looking at them insecure, looking at his pajamas, and he's like, y "You two know each other?" And he starts straightening out his posture a little. You two know each other? I'll be like, "Who are you, nigga?" No, we have not had the pleasure of meeting face to face. I'm Lally. G H G H Scott. Amanda looks confused, and the man's daughter speaks up. George, he's George. That's how it reads in his emails. Oh, right, right. Forgive me, I forgot. See, this is why I much preferred the life before the internet because we would have spoken on the phone and you would have recognized my voice and known that this is our house. I'm sorry? This is our house. I'm the George you emailed back and forth with. No, I, I remember the name. I just, um, this is your house? Bitch, if I say this is my motherfucking house and my name matches the emails, yes, this is my goddamn house. See, this is one thing that I'm not a political person. However, there's this thing that I'd be catching on the internet about um, how, uh, let's call them liberals since that's what they say. How liberals have this like kind of like not racist vibe, but like. There's a kind of condescending vibe, but just so you know, it's gonna be very polit. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very, what's it called, delusional in this because it's made by the Obamas. It's hella blue. This is about what's about to happen to America. Da da da. da. Like there's a certain type of people. Let's say elitists. Let, let, let's say elitists. Let's not give them the racism card. Come on, let's not do that here. There's a certain level of elitist people who literally look at. Say like I have this house, right? If you look at me, I would have this house. You probably wouldn't think like this is my house, which will make sense because I don't really well, I don't really look very clean cut. I got hella tattoos and shit, but that's besides the point. If I look like Mahershala Ali in a motherfucking tuxedo, bitch, this is my motherfucking house. Okay? This is my house. I look like I own this house. I have a tux on a random Tuesday. Who wears tuxes on a random Tuesday? Who is not doing some shit? Like I, like what the fuck? Like come on, Julia. Come on, Julia. Yeah, obviously this is your house oh i emailed you for about this house and then your name matches the email this is your the two stare at amanda and clay as if they did not just say that mm. okay so to give you context george and his daughter ruth are black and amanda said it in a very racist way yes bro it wasn't like oh why are you here i rented your house from you like but what she was bro like, this is your house like what the fuck wrong with you bro you know niggas be making money it's 2024 you know niggas make money Yes, this is my motherfucking house that looks like it's from L.A. and not New York on the outskirts of New York. Yes, this is my fucking house. Stupid. Bitch, you rented my house. Talk to me with some respect. What? That You'll see. It continues. It continues. It's wow. not just one comment. It continues, okay? Nah, bro. Because, I mean no, because the thing is, like, in this movie, cuz, I'm going to spoil this before she talks about it. In this movie, she ends up start dancing with this motherfucker. Talking about, I am so sorry 
did I, did I, um, did, did, did I, did, did all this in the beginning? And then you gonna talk, then they gonna hug, talk about, I'm married, you're married, oh my god, this fucking movie, dude, like, get the fuck out of here, now, I'm not dancing with nobody to talk about, is this your house? Talk to me no any type of way in my motherfucking house, I'm not doing that shit. Amanda Gosh. was giving racist, like, she was giving... I don't even know if this could be categorized as a microaggression. It was just aggressive. It is. Well, they gracefully it is. ignore it. And George says, I'm sorry. You think we could come inside? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 sure. He's you very nice. Come on in. Get out of the cold. You know, come on, come on. So Clay's nice. Amanda's very skeptical. No, they she's, enter she's and mean. They pause in the foyer. And George says, I understand how strange this must be for you. Us turning up like this unannounced. We'd have called you, you see, but um, the phones are out. Amanda pauses and looks at her phone. Yeah, um, my phone doesn't seem to have service either. Ruth, George's daughter, the owner. I just want y'all to look at her. Like, to me, she's pretty. She's very pretty. She's very pretty. Like, I would listen to everything she says. But, like, she's kind of mean. And also, there's a lot of continuity things in this because, oh, okay. Wait, no. Oh, so she doesn't have tattoos here. See, I was talking to this girl. Bro, I was I was on the phone with this girl. She was talking about some, where are her tattoos? And she was wearing a shirt. I'm like, nigga, the, the, the fuck? She had the tattoos under the shirt. Like, no. Sorry. My bad. My bad. I'm sorry. Owner of this home, she smirks. It's almost as if <clears throat> we're telling the truth. <laughs> what? Very snarky. Because, like, you know, Amanda seems very skeptical of them. So Ruth is like, uh, it's almost like we're telling the truth of why we're here and this is our house. <laughs> and you would think that Amanda would be embarrassed, but she just stares at Ruth like Ruth is the one being weird. Hell yeah. Ruth holds her place and she's staring back, arms crossed. So how, Amanda's how old is Ruth? Like probably 19. So Amanda's husband tries to she's come definitely in, in college. and does damage control. Clay is like, uh, <laughs> um, I'm Clay, by the way. Ruth. And I'm GH again. Clay, nice to meet you. You know what Ruth reminds me of? Ruth reminds me of, like, those girls that go to, like, college and study, like, sociology and or just, like, gender studies or those type of psychology, maybe, or those type of people. And she reads, like, hella books that are, like, politically oriented or just those books that um talk about, say, to me, that I think, because I definitely had someone I was talking to that acted just like this. So I'm just going off of that. Like, those type of books that, like, tell you about being a woman and just like the feminist books and everything but she got this type of like she got this type of oomph about her like she's like not militant but she's like she not afraid to tell you about yourself like those type of those type of girls we love those type of girls you know what i'm saying but like it's just like i can i can definitely see the type of person well i can read and i'll probably be wrong but i can read what type of person she is like she's very like I guess a type. I guess that's what it is. But like, she's young. But like, she like knows a lot of shit. So she's like, she got that energy about her. Like, yeah, bitch, yeah, this my house, nigga. It's like we're telling the truth, stupid. It's my house, nigga. I like Ruth. I really, I'm not gonna. Lie. I really like Ruth. Like, she's cool, but this is rude. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we uh sit down and you know talk? <laughs> the children are sleeping, Clay. And everyone is just awkwardly standing there. Like, this why is, my... is she so upset? Yeah, like... And Clay says, mm, honey, but I, I wouldn't worry too much about them. You know Archie would sleep through the atom bomb, you know. <laughs> why don't we all go into the kitchen? Clay is ushering Ruth and GH through, and Amanda is just following behind them, slowly watching them. George is Bro, trying Amanda's to break the tension explain dude. why they're here. We were at the symphony in the Bronx. Have the you guys symphony. been? Uh, no. Their productions are in a class of their own. Yeah. Yeah. Dad's on the board of the Philharmonic. He likes to encourage everyone he knows to take an interest in classical music. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I'm a very lucky daughter. <laughs> kind of making a joke. Like, <laughs> I don't want to sit through this, right? <laughs> and Clay is trying to be interested, but Amanda is giving Karen. Which, okay, so... Side note, I think Amanda's reaction is somewhat warranted in the sense that, like, if people show up saying they're the owners of my vacation home that I rented, I would also be highly skeptical of letting them in. But However, why? The racist comments kind of debunk everything that exactly, she says. Exactly. So it's like, like a mixture of, like, on one hand, people are like, I get why she's skeptical. But on the other hand, you don't have to be skeptical and racist. You could just be skeptical. Bro, like, I'm not going to lie to you, cuz. You can be skeptical, but you ain't got to talk to people like that. Like, I'm a, I am I said this when I was watching this movie. I'm like, bro, if people tell me that they're the owner of this house, and they walk in this shit, and they go straight to the foyer and just start snooping around as if, like, they own the motherfucking house, I'm not going to talk to them any type of way. Even if I started off talking to them any type of way, then the nigga going to go to the cabinet where there's a gun in the bit. Mm. 
So she's like cardigan wrapped tightly around her, you know? Arms crossed, lips tight and thin. Even when Ruth asks if she can get a glass of water for herself, Clay says yes, because technically it's her home. Amanda is glaring at him like he just offered a serial killer a knife. Hmm. George is noticing all of this. Anyway, we were driving back to the city, um, to our city home, and then something happened. A blackout. A blackout? Mm, <coughs> yes. Well, the lights seem good here. Everything seems to be working good here. <clears throat> they glance around, and yeah, most of the lights are still on, which is, you know, something you would think that our little Karen Amanda would point out, but instead yeah. she's watching Ruth staring her the down. The lights were... Ruth is grabbing a cup from the cabinet, and she knows exactly which cabinet to open. She walks over to the sink and fills it with water. George, the dad, continues, well, um, that's exactly right. We thought, well, with everything that's probably going on in the city right now, we, um, we didn't, he doesn't know what to say. So Ruth walks over with her glass. We live on the 14th floor in the city and he can't climb 14 flights because of his knee. Plus the traffic lights went out. We would have been sitting in a six hour parking lot if we headed home. So there was a blackout and you decided to drive all the way out here. These roads are familiar to me. I barely even thought about it. So when we saw the lights go out, I looked at Ruth. So Ruth is now saying, uh, Ruth is uh, now uh. finishing George's sentence. And he said that he would feel better if we stayed here. Like you this, know? this dynamic is interesting to me. Like, I don't know a daughter and dad dynamic. I don't know. Like, but this is a daughter and dad dynamic. So it's just like, hmm. Like the way she was talking to this nigga, it was just like, hmm. I don't know. I guess this is just some type of new age shit. I don't know. I wouldn't talk to my dad like that. I wouldn't dare talk to my pop like that. Holy fuck. Oh, in our house. Wait, you want to stay here? But we're staying here. It's my house. Well, under the circumstances, we thought you might understand. Clay responds, yeah, of course. Amanda starts walking over and Clay starts noticing, oh my God, I'm about to get beat up. So he starts changing his message. Y it's just, uh, Amanda takes over. Look, I think what he means, what my husband Clay means <clears throat> is of course we understand. I know it's a surprise, but we thought maybe if you let us stay, George is very gentle, but Ruth is standing her ground. She's looking at yeah. them like, because, you know, it is our house. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Which is valid, right? Like, but they it, could easily kick the Stanfords out in the middle of the night if they really wanted. I'm sure they might get sued. I don't know. Or give them their money back. Kick them out. They could easily do that. But they're being very nice about wait it. Wait like, to what he says. I'll stay here, right? Wait to what he says. Hold on. George is stammering <clears throat> and he smiles. What my... Oh, God. I think my headphones just died. Oh, shit. Give me a second. You know, I've been talking a lot. Shout out to transformative content. <laughs> what I was trying to say is we wanted to be somewhere safe. We're on vacation. We're staying here. Amanda, Clay, we could absolutely refund you your money. You want us to leave? It's the middle of the night. My children are sleeping upstairs. You come in here and you talk about refunding our I think I need to call the company. I don't even think you can do this. She goes and grabs her laptop like a little Karen and she's like stamping away. And George is like, that's really not necessary, Amanda. And why not? Because we're not asking you to leave. We could refund you, say, 50% of what you paid. And there's an in-law suite down in the basement downstairs. We could stay there. Now Ruth is confused. Dad, you want us to stay downstairs? But Clay is interested. I'm going to be honest with you, cuz. Like... First off, this man George is being real accommodating. George is being really accommodating. First off, he said he's going to offer to pay you a full refund. She starts geeking. Then she says, no, we're not going to stay. We're not going to kick you out. We just want to stay here. We're going to refund you like 50% of your money. Being more accommodating, we can sleep in the in-law suite, which is beautiful, by the fucking way, which is amazing. First off, the, nigga, the, the house is insane. I don't know why Ruth is geeking for real. You don't, nigga. If y'all, if this y'all vacation home shit, y'all could take this, nigga. We got the shit in the bottom or at the at the top. This shit is fine, nigga. We try to just be safe. Fuck all that other shit. And Amanda talk about some we're vacationing. If you don't open up my motherfucking doors to my own house, it's going to get real nasty in here, okay? And your, your husband, Clay, don't look like he can handle himself. Look at his thong slippers. You you think your husband can protect? No. Just 
Come on, just let us stay, please. Like, I'm trying to be nice, okay? I could flip this whole shit upside down. I could blow this house up if I want to. It's my house, okay? You know what I'm saying? So I don't understand why they're being so rude. Like, ugh. 50%? <clears throat> Clay walks over to his wife, Amanda. That's a good offer. <laughs> she ignores him. I, I think I need to look at the terms and conditions here. But uh, Look, I just, I just... I don't feel comfortable staying in this house with... Black people, people? I don't know. It felt like she wanted to say black people. Yeah, honestly, like, bro. Honestly. Like, it was weird. Like, like, you could just say stranger. Just say, yeah. Like, you could either say strangers. First off, they're not really strangers because you, you're renting their house. They are strangers, but at the same time, nigga, you're a stranger in their house. I don't know the renter's laws, so y'all can tell me what's up in the comments. But anyway. um, Like, bro, like, if you gonna... Just say nigga, bro. I don't want to stay in this house with these niggers. Just say that. Just say that. But, like, why was there a weird pause? It like, just is, it's a blackout. <clears throat> it could be over in a couple of hours. It's a blackout, and you need to let the blacks in. Fucking hell. George walks over from the kitchen island to the locked <clears throat> wine cabinet in the corner, and he tries to open the bottom drawer with one of his keys, but it won't open. Uh-oh. And he tries another... And it still won't open. And he tries another. It still won't open. And he's bent over and he laughs nervously because everyone's staring at him. I should have listened to my wife and had these labeled already. Hmm. But then click. Ah, here we are. George opens the drawer and there's two things inside. Nobody else can see. An envelope and next to it is a silver gun. A silver gun. He grabs the envelope and closes the drawer and locks it again. I could give you a thousand dollars now for the night. I that should cover almost half of what you're paying for the weekend. Clay's eyes are big. He grabs the envelope and he kind of shrugs at Amanda. A thousand dollars is a thousand dollars, honey. Bro, like, you can't act like refund is yeah. like making money. He's like so excited. Yes. I'm like, dude, you pay for it. You know that, right? He no, she paid for it. Okay? She we'll paid for it. We'll be grateful. And tomorrow we'll know a little bit more and we can figure this out. Amanda <sighs> turns to her husband. I think. I need to discuss this privately with my husband. And she walks out of there. Clay follows after her, and he catches up with his wife in the master bedroom, and he's sitting on the chair, elbows on his knees, stressed out, and Amanda is pacing the room. Why did you tell them that they could stay? Bitch, this is a What, you, you think they're lying? I mean, it's a young woman and her father. They look innocent enough. They're strangers. They introduce themselves. They knocked on the door in the middle of the night. This well, is would their you house. rather them burst in? Yeah, like... They scared the shit out of me, Clay. Well, I think, you know, they were scared too, right? I mean, they didn't know what else to do. Well, here's an idea. Go to a hotel. This is their... I'm not going to lie, bro. I, like, I feel as though, like, if my wife is geeking like this, I wouldn't keep having, like, I would I would try to, like, at least diffuse the situation. Like, it's obvious that she's, like, amped up and she's scared as fuck. I would like to hope that I'm the type of husband to be like, listen, okay, this is their house. We're going to do this. They're li they literally have... An, they have ability to to probably get in this. First off, we let them in anyway. We let them in already. So we're already fucked if we're going to be fucked. All right. So we're just going to just, hey, they could listen. Okay. They say this is their house. They're snooping around like it's their house. We can use the probability of this being their house. And for one, we should not talk to them any old type of way because this is their house. Everything is going to be fine, Amanda. Trust me. But then I would have to be like trusting. I don't know. I'm just like Amanda. You're 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 tripping, Amanda. Please, Amanda. Please, please. Her home, as you know, the girl kept reminding us. Well, we didn't ask for any proof. I didn't hear their car. Did you? No, but it's windy. Maybe we didn't hear him. Or maybe they <clears throat> snuck up the road. Or maybe Amanda, we should calm down a little. I'm sorry. This really doesn't seem like their house. The board of the Philharmonic? I don't know. It just all feels like a con to me. They want to stay here with us? Forget it. I wouldn't be able to sleep with strangers in this house. Rose is right down the hall. What if he sneaks in? I don't know. What if he... I don't even want to think about it. Touches you your kids. You don't think he'd want to molest Archie, though, do you? And Amanda is like, what are you talking about? I'm just saying I don't like the way any of this sounds, okay? He came here because he doesn't want to climb a flight of stairs. Give me a break. All this feels a little improvised. God, what if it's a scam? What if, what if, what if the blackout and the, the whatever, that's just all part of the story? I don't think. You know, if it's a scam, I don't think they would give you a thousand dollars. 
Unless it's like funny money. Did you check the mon- did you check the envelope to see if it's like actual money? No, he probably didn't. I think they made that up, honey. I mean, that's probably why the phones and the internet aren't working. And besides, hey, he had the keys. He opened up the liquor cabinet, remember? So what if he had the keys? Maybe he's a handyman and she's the housekeeper. The housekeeper always knows where. All right, bro. I'm going to be honest with you cuz like all this probability shit, you you doing you're literally playing these mental gymnastics when there's literally a simple type of uh, when there's literally like a simplistic line of proof that this is probably their house. You you're just like making shit up now. You you're literally just making shit up. What if he's a handyman? Really? The probability of a handyman pulling up in the middle of the night in a suit with his daughter? First things first, they pulled up in a Bentley. I just want you to know that. I just I just I just want you I just want you to know that. Where the stash of money is. And besides, he had his back <clears throat> to us. Maybe he broke into it. Honey, I don't see what he has to gain by giving us a thousand bucks. Why are you trying so hard to believe everyone except your own wife? Something is- Because your wife is trip- It's happening and I don't trust them. I think they're scared. They're scared, nice people. I'm not gonna lie, that actually like triggered me. I'm, I'm not gonna hold you. Like, okay, you're my wife. Cool. I understand that. But you're wrong. <laughs> like, you're, you're tripping. You're literally tripping. This is why I'm not believing you. You're coming up with other shit right now. I'm not believing you right now. And even if I did, they're in the house already. We already let them in the house. If you wanted to have one of those conversations, you could have had it before you opened the door and let them in the house. <laughs> like, y'all leaving them in the house by themselves when the kids are sleeping? Like, what the fuck? Like, huh? People who need a place <clears throat> to spend the night. And he tries to hug her to calm her down. And it kind of works. And he says, all right, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to talk to them. And if I get a bad vibe, I'm going to say, no, nope, we're not comfortable with this arrangement. Okay? But if things are cool, I say we let them stay. I wish I had your faith in people, Clay. And they make their way downstairs. And George is making his signature cocktail for himself and one for Clay. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I understand why she's like this crazy because it, it, will, it will come up later. But, like, still, it's just like, yo, like, why do you hate people so much? Like, oh, God. How about you, Amanda? What's in it exactly? Before George answers, Amanda responds, Fentanyl. actually, I'll pass. And she snatches her glass of wine off the table. I said, is annoyed. I like, she's fentanyl. walking off because, like, geez, like, all these microaggressions. But Amanda is far from done. She does not care that she's offending them. She sits down and goes straight into interrogation mode. How long have you been here? George. Oh, uh, bought it almost 20 years ago now. But at this point, it's it's home or a home away from home, I guess. We fixed it up about five years back. We had a great contractor. A lot of details were his idea. Hmm. And where in the city do you live? We're on Park between 81st and 82nd. How about you? Uh, Brooklyn. Clay is now talking. Sunset Park. Well, it's actually uh, Park Slope. Ah, very nice. That's where everyone wants to be these days. The fucking Affordable brownstone. Too. Affordable, my you asshole. See Amanda kind of hey, wins at that. Let's go. I think Ruth even looked over there when she was thinking about. Affordable, my asshole. <laughs> where do you say? I'm about to look up these places. Where do you say? Park between 81st and 82nd. New York. NYC. Let's see where you live. I don't know much about New York, but I know everything is expensive. So, ooh, floor plan. What the fuck? This looks expensive. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Brooklyn. Clay is now talking. Sunset Park. Well, it's actually okay. Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Sunset Park, Brooklyn. I don't think I. I don't think I can show this. So I'm not gonna show this. Oh, it ranges from about like three hundred thousand to one point five million. That's very. Oh. Oh, wow. The ones that's like 1.2, these brownstones are multifamily homes. So I don't like I don't like how this looks. Oh, I ain't paying no 1.5 for this shit. Oh, God. Oh, my God. 
Oh my god. Oh, never mind. Ah, very nice. That's where everyone wants to be these days. Affordable too. It is relatively you just affordable. See Amanda kind of hey, wince at that. Let's go. I think Ruth even looked over there when she was thinking about flying the coop. <laughs> and where's your wife? I'm curious if you're worried about her in the city. Well, she's on a work trip to Morocco. She's an art dealer, so she travels a lot. That's Her flight tough. is due back here in the morning, actually. Mm. Huh. Uh-huh, I see. Could I see some ID, please? <laughs> Clay is like, oh, Amanda. It's a fair ask. You're a stranger showing up in the middle of the night and my- Dumbass, you should have asked for ID at the beginning of the fucking thing. Kids are upstairs. You don't even care and write. You're not even a good racist. Like. George is like, of course, I understand. And he starts feeling for his suit pockets. Oh, don't have it. Mm. Well, you're never going to believe this. I love the timing. I must have left my wallet in the coat pocket when I checked in at the symphony. In the commotion, I must have forgotten it there. But you said you heard about the blackout while you were already on your way home. And suddenly, a loud, blaring beep noise that interrupts shit. them. It's Bro, really bad. Like, think tornado shit. warning, but worse. God. The three adults in the kitchen whip their heads to the living room, and Ruth is standing in front of the TV with the remote in her hands. And it's like she tried to turn on the TV, but something's going on on the television. It's a national alert. Effective immediately. This is not a test. Emergency broadcast system issued an unrecognized emergency warning. This is a national emergency. I'm going to. All all radio stations and televisions will seize their programs during this alert. This is a national emergency. All It was so loud, Ruth tries to switch over to another channel, even lowering the volume, but nothing is working. <laughs> what is it? What's the alarm? It's What's a national the, emergency. It nothing. It's saying nothing, just like this oh. is a national emergency. Mm -hmm. What emergency? We don't know. Y'all are dying. Everyone else seems concerned. They're like, what emergency? We but have Amanda been breached. is like chilling. She's like, well, no need to get stressed. We're only talking about a blackout here. Ruth is looking at this lady like, you cannot be serious. Like, you cannot be so skeptical of minorities, but then like not skeptical of a national alert. <laughs> That's like. Like, like, like what? Like, I, I just don't understand the thought process with Amanda. Like, how how is how is two black people scare you more than a national emergency? That's not a test, by the way. What the fuck? Like, huh? Talking about it's just a blackout. Blaring in your face, but you're like, mm -mm, minorities cannot be homeowners. It's like very bizarre. Ruth is like, what the fork, lady? A blackout is not nothing, Amanda. It could be something. The symptom of something bigger, like terrorism or a bomb, like the one that you said your son would sleep through. <laughs> George is like, Ruth, sweetie. And finally, some sense from the Stanfords. Clay puts his foot down and he says, I think that you guys should stay here tonight. Tomorrow, we will sort everything out. And things always look different by the light of day. They all kind of stand somewhat in agreement when all of a sudden, a noise is behind them. The Jenga tower on the table that the Stan Sanfords were working on falls out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. And in the basement, Ruth is now complaining to her dad. I can't believe we're staying in the basement. Oh, I thought this. Oh, never mind. I thought this looked way better than what it looked like. Uh, I apologize. My bad. Yeah, I don't want to stay here. Fuck. Ugh. What do we get to do tomorrow? Their laundry? <laughs> Ruth, please. I'll take the floor. You take the bed. And the first thing that George does when he gets downstairs is turn on the TV and it's the same national emergency that's playing. And Ruth looks at her dad. We need to get them out of here, dad. We're not going to do that by scaring them. They need to think that everything's going to be okay. He knows what? something. But everything is going to be okay, isn't it? No. George looks at Ruth and he turns to walk away. What's going on? What are you thinking? Your client didn't tell you anything else, did he? There's no point in talking about this, Ruth, until we know more. Upstairs, Clay and Amanda are in bed, and Clay is trying to knock out, but Amanda is arms crossed plotting, okay? She's f***ing with us, that girl. She's, she's poking me. Amanda's sitting up while Clay is laying down, and he's trying to cuddle up with Amanda. Don't take it too personal, honey. I don't think I can listen to much more of that snark, even if it does turn out to be their house. Oh my goodness, are we still on that? Well, there's not a single photo on the wall. Not one. Not a wedding picture of the supposed art dealer's... You fucking idiot. It's a vacation home. Why the fuck? Why would somebody who lives... Why would somebody who's using that property as a rental property 
have their family stuff on and then they told you where they live whatever bro life on the business trip or that spoiled brat as a baby like think about it i'm sure they take them down when they rent the house out for privacy concerns i don't know there's just something off about them okay why don't you say anything about what we saw on the beach today the boat it, it was an oil tanker honey well why didn't you tell them i don't know it just seemed like i was piling on why didn't you hmm. i was afraid afraid of what that it would confirm something in the main floor, so the Sanfords are at the very top, George and Ruth are in the basement, and on the main level where like the living room kitchen are, the TV is still on and it's a blue screen now with the national alert playing, but for a brief second, there's a static mm -hmm. and a new message shows up. It's a CNN breaking news headline that reads, cyber attack across the country, power outages report along East Coast metropolitan areas. Like, that's that's when I thought, that's when I realized that this movie was not an end of the world movie. This movie was about niggas attacking the united states <laughs> i was like oh it's one of those oh it's okay like a flash it's like that's what was trying to be played but someone's like trying to take over type of vibe like they're not trying to let you know and now we head into part two see that's one of the things i do like about this movie is like it's telling you that um it's telling you like because we're gonna they're gonna talk about this later but it's telling you like how this isn't really like what you think it is. You know what I'm saying? It's like one of them. Two, the curve. The curve. Amanda wakes up to Rose sitting on top of her, shaking her. Mom, mom, mom. Rosie, uh, Rosie, Rosie it's what's like wrong? ten when I wake up. Mom, two problems. One, I was literally about to start the Friends series finale, but the internet on my iPad still isn't working. I tried to watch it on the TV because I read somewhere that's like um, what are those things called where they like play old things again and again? <laughs> reruns honey why did they do that again i don't know rosie we were really bored back then anyways there's something wrong with the tv it's all messed up that's problem number two please fix it i have incredible anxiety about how they're going to wrap up the show <laughs> don't you think you're taking this a little too seriously honey this isn't fair it's a vacation dad said that we're on vacation we can have as much screen time as we want i don't understand how um amanda is like she's so skeptical and like she's like anxiety driven but when she talks to her daughter, she's talking about, don't you think you're overreacting? Like, that's kind of telling to me. And it's like... <laughs> okay. Well, A, I did not say that. And B, Dad, the one who said that, is still asleep. So just go wait in the living room and I'll, I'll be downstairs. And I don't really think much of this detail, but apparently everyone on TikTok is dissecting this detail for later today. But Rose is wearing a NASA shirt. Oh, yeah. Rose, Rose is, no, because Rose is wearing a NASA shirt and Archie's wearing an Obey shirt. I noticed that as well. Rolls over and she grabs her phone from the nightstand. She's drowsy, but once she sees what's on her phone, she shoots straight up. All the notifications on her screen are about cyber attacks and major blackouts. Clay, honey, get up, get up, get, get up. Look, he takes her phone. What am I looking at? <laughs> doesn't say anything. What? what? No, that doesn't make sense. It, it, it's just there. Her lock screen is back to normal and there are no notifications, just a family photo of the Sanfords in front of their Christmas tree. Like, bro, like, it's, 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 it's clear. I thought my door was opening. It's clear that, um, bitch. Oh. It's clear that this is about this is like some inside type of thing. Because why else would why else would they show the notifications and then clear them? Like somebody's like somebody on the inside is actually trying to like take like it's trying to what's it called? Like put this shit under the rug so people won't get scared. Wait, just you wait. Are you sure, honey? What did it say? Yes, of course I'm sure. There were four news articles, um, two about the blackout, and then one that just said that hackers were behind the power outage. Hackers? Yeah, and then there was one that said breaking, but then it was just like gibberish, no words, just random letters. Maybe they hacked the cell network. Are you, is that a f***ing question you're asking me? How would I know? Why are you being so nonchalant about all of this, honey? Did you forget that there are these people still in our house? These niggers. I trusted you to handle this. Clay sits up and he's looking determined all of a sudden. Okay, got it. I'm going to go drive into town. I'll go to the store, buy a newspaper, and someone in town must know more about what's going on, right? I'm going to take care of this. 
He kisses her, jumps off the bed. Meanwhile, their daughter Rose is waiting for them to come downstairs to fix the TV. And she still has no idea that there's two strangers in the house, but she does notice a beautiful Bentley parked outside. Mm -hmm. Amanda comes downstairs and, oh yes, honey, um, about the car. Last night, these people, the Scots, they had to come by. There was um, a problem and they weren't too far from here, so they stopped by. What? Mom, what are you even talking about? Rose gets annoyed at her parents. She doesn't care about the strangers. She just doesn't like the fact that they can't fix the TV. So she literally goes to pout near the pool, but she hears a little rustling. And she turns to her right, and by the bushes, there's deer. Not even just one, but like 10 staring at her. Yeah, wait till it pans up. It's 45,000 of them bitches. Rose looks back at her parents, and they're in the kitchen completely oblivious, and she starts walking in the grass towards the deer. Rose is outside with the deer. Clay is driving into town. Amanda is alone in the kitchen. Ruth is the one to come upstairs first to grab a cup of coffee, and they're alone. And she says, you mind if I have some coffee? Amanda says, help yourself. You know where the mugs are, right? I had news alerts on my phone this morning. Your phone is working? No, I mean, um, they must have come in overnight somehow, and then they disappeared. What did they say? There were two about the blackout, and then something about hackers being behind it. Hackers? Mm Mm-hmm. Where are the power plants in New York City, do you know? I mean, they must be in Queens, I guess, or, or near the river. Why are you asking about power plants? Hackers. Hackers can get into power plants. That's probably what caused the outage. You remember that thing that happened in Jersey a few years back? It nearly caused a... A meltdown? But as quickly as Ruth is into the conversation, she's over it. She's staring out the window at Rose. Is that your daughter out there? She's sweet. How old is she? 13, last month. Still kind of a baby at heart, though. And Amanda says, if it's okay, I would like to keep what's going on between the adults. The kids like the pool, and I'm just going to encourage them to do that until we know more. I don't want them to panic over nothing. Hmm. You're already panicking over. I don't anyone, Amanda, but I disagree with you. Panicking over friends. Disagree with me about what? I don't think this is nothing. So what is it that you said you do? Um, I'm in advertising. On the client side, I manage relationships. Huh. I would have never guessed that. Yeah. Uh Yeah. It's it's crazy, right? (laughs) Somebody does have social skills. And what about your husband? Uh, Clay is a professor at City College. English and media studies. You know, I've always had plenty of friends major in media studies, but I never even know what it means. (laughs) And you? What is it that you do, Ruth? Me? Oh, (laughs) I'm still figuring my shit out. I'm trying not to rush into anything. The last thing I want is to be sucked into a career that I regret 10 years from now, which by that point, I would be trapped by the pressure to stay on course because I'll be too old to re-enter the workforce. You know what I mean. (laughs) George walks upstairs in that moment. Morning. Any news, anyone? Phones are still not working. Looks like the TVs are out. Where's Clay? He went to the store to get newspaper or to try and find someone to talk to to see if they know what's going on. Smart. I thought I'd go over to the neighbor's house, the Huxleys. They only live a few miles down the road. These names. And you think they'll be home. Unlikely. It is the off season. Um, you often see no one here around this time, but I'll drive back anyway and check. Before you go, Dad, you might want to hear about the alerts. Alerts? Oh, um... I had alerts on my phone this morning. Two of them were about the blackout, and then there was one of them, and uh, hackers were behind it, was what it said. Huh. What? You think there's going to be a meltdown at the power plant, too? George chuckles and kind of side-eyes Ruth, and he smiles and says, Is that what Ruth told you? Among other horrifying things, yeah, that's what she told me. (laughs) Well, obviously, my Ruthie is being a little paranoid. Dad, aren't you the one that always said that if you're not paranoid by now, it's probably too late? <laughs> I don't... Eh, I don't know. I feel like something like this probably wouldn't really scare me. I would just be praying and make sure I repent and everything, just in case. You know, there ain't nothing wrong with praying and repenting. I need to do that, actually. I'm going to do that after this. Because I ain't say my prayers. I feel bad. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sure this will turn out to be a big nothing, like that uh, love you bug. Is that coffee? Can I have some? He turns to the coffee machine coffee. and Amanda's confused. I'm sorry, what is the love you bug? It was a computer worm back in the 2000s. People would get an email with a subject line, I love you. You clicked on the attachment and it would send it all to your contacts. It crippled businesses because of a virus it implanted and caused billions of dollars in damages. Oh Turns out it was just two teenagers in the Philippines. Oh my God. Could just be as innocent as that. 
That is not Amanda innocent. Amanda smiles and says, <laughs> I, I think I'll go um, wake my son up. And when she's out of sight, we see George's smile kind of fall. And he stares out the drawer of the liquor cabinet with the, the gun, gun inside. The Dad, yapa. I'm worried about mom. You think her flight's going to be okay? Sure. Matter of fact, I bet she's redirected to some airport in Ohio and she's probably cussing out the, every customer service rep until they get her on a plane home. Mm -hmm. Dad, do you remember the time the three of us went to Italy? Yes. And what made you think of that? I don't know what else to think about right now. It's not Italia. So, meanwhile, Archie wakes up, Italia. the son wakes up, goes to the pool, and the two of them, they're hanging out by the pool, the two kids. And you would think that Archie is the smarter one because of the age and the fact that Rose can't seem to talk about anything else but her show friends, but she's the one that keeps feeling like something is off. Archie is busy trying to sneakily take pictures of Ruth's butt in her bikini at the pool. Nasty what? nigga. Yeah. I didn't even Did see that. Did say these people were again? I didn't even Rose see that. That's respond. crazy. What are you looking at, Rose? A nasty fuck. Archie, I saw something this morning. She gets up and starts walking Horny towards fuck. the bushes, and Archie follows after her. Deer. I saw deer. Yeah, they're everywhere, dumbass. They're like squirrels or pigeons. Who cares? Pigeons. No, this was different, Archie. Like, they were trying to tell us something. We should see what else is out there. Jeez, are you really that bored? Is this because you can't watch your stupid show? I said yes. doesn't look at Archie. Instead, she announces in a creepy voice, I'm going. Oh God. She steps forward into the bushes and Archie follows after her because he probably has to take care of her and has no choice. And first off, I don't know why they did that with shorts on. They they had shorts and sandals on going into the woods. They was not prepared at all. See, this is see, Amanda, this is why you have to tell your family that you're going on vacation so they can properly pack and properly prepare. Because why the, what the what the hell? And tell me how they're suddenly in a forest, like deep in a forest. Like deep okay? as hell. They can kind of see the big vacation house peeking out from the trees, but clearly it's a very secluded home. Yeah. Rose is on a mission. She's walking in around and they see this like weird shed in the middle of the forest and it looks like a serial killer bunker a little bit. I mean, there are windows, so it's not that creepy, but it is a little weird. Yeah. They walk inside the shed and Archie is disappointed. <laughs> Ugh, this place is so fucking boring. It's just a bunch of gardening tools. Side note, there is a whole conversation about the outfit choices for these two in this scene. So remember how I said Rose is wearing a NASA shirt? Archie is wearing an Obey shirt, mm -hmm. which is a streetwear brand or like mm -hmm. a skater brand. Yep. But the word is not lost on people because it says Obey. Mm -hmm. They both look around and Archie says, oh, maybe this is where he sleeps. Who? Whoever made that impression. And we pan over and it's a pile of leaves and like a human sized dent. Not a bad setup, whoever he is. Look, and he's got a little window over here to look out of, so he can look directly at. Directly at what? They both look out the window. Your room. He can see straight into your room. Jeez. Just imagine it's all dark out here. Your little bedside lamp is glowing. He could just follow the light up to you. Boo! Oh my God. And Rose screams, ow! She bumps her head on the window. That's not funny, Archie. That really hurt. You'll be fine. No, I won't. Dude, calm the f*** down. It's a joke. It's a joke. This morning I saw deer, Archie. Not deer. Like a f ton of deer. A hundred maybe. Maybe more. Right in the backyard. Archie's looking at her like she's still crazy. It was really weird, Archie. Do deer just go around in big groups like that? Not why really. Why would I know anything about deer? If you're so worried about it, why don't you just ask mom or dad? <laughs> or, I was about to say Google, like but you can't use care. it. care. No one cares about what I have to say. Oh, God. Yeah, that's probably true. Which, yeah, no one does care about what she has to say. It's kind of sad. Meanwhile, Clay is driving into town to try and get some damn answers. And he's driving with his windows down uh, this empty country road. Literally just trees on both sides. I have no idea where this is. This vacation like, home sucks. They're saying it's close to the city. But then, like, suddenly it's, like, the countryside. I have no idea. Geographically speaking, I'm lost. But then, The continuity in this movie is insane. Like, I don't know what's happening. Like, random shots show New York City in the skyline. So I'm like... <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> anyway, it's so rural that there's not even a suburban plaza in sight. And he's trying to fumble with the radio, but no stations are working. And he hears this like rumbling noise as if an airplane is flying out nearby. And he keeps driving aimlessly with a cigarette out the window, enjoying his peace and quiet when he sees a woman on the side of the road. This is like a two lane road in the countryside. There's not people. There's not even another car. Yeah. This woman um, is frantically trying to get his attention. She's waving her arms side to side. Help me. Help me. He's I'm not going to lie. This scene right here gave me a lot of anxiety because, first off, why is this woman by herself on this countryside road all the way out here? And two, she was speaking nothing but Spanish. 
I don't know too much Spanish, and I would just I would probably try and help, but I feel like I would probably do the same thing Clay is doing here because I don't know. But also, I think I would probably keep driving because I'm not getting killed. I noticed that's wrong. I'm sorry. I have a family to go to. Um, I watch a lot of true crime, and I'm not I'm not about to get got by the by the you know the the regular schmegular killer uh hitchhike hitchhiking thumb. You know what I'm saying? Not really a. No. Blows down and stops on the side of the road. And she's screaming in Spanish, Senor, Senor, Senor. Honestly, she looks like she's seen some shit. Her like face is shit. red. This does not appear to be a regular hitchhiker. She's frantically trying to talk to him in Spanish. And she's very passionate about what she is saying. And Clay is kind of creeped out. He keeps trying to tell her, I'm sorry, I, I don't speak Spanish. But the woman keeps frantically yelling and trying to motion with her arms. And Clay still can't understand her. Do you know what she's saying? No. No. Do and, I speak? And then <laughs> fucking, and then goddamn, uh, Netflix is not doing no fucking uh help. Nigga just put screaming in Spanish. I hate, bro, I hate when streaming sites do that, bro. Like, help out, like, bro, goddamn, please. I saw a light. But sometimes they have uh, uh, subtitles, you know? No, no. No subtitles. And I think with everything going on, the fact that they are the only ones on the road, with each frantic word, Clay is getting more scared for some reason. The woman is now crying, gasping, screaming, and Clay can't do it anymore. He just goes, I am so sorry. And he starts driving. He starts driving off. Leaving. Is she trying to get in the car? No, she's like, oh. try she's like scared and trying to explain something to him. Like, don't go there? Almost. Maybe. Okay. But he just starts driving off and the woman is like desperately trying to hold like on to his window. Running. She needs help clearly, but Clay does not care. So he just starts slowly driving off, refusing to make eye contact with this woman. He drives a little faster, faster, rolls up his window and he just books it out of there driving. Oh, okay. And he can't even hear her and see, he doesn't even want to look in the rear view mirror to see if she's following. But that buzzing noise in the background keeps getting louder and louder. And then eventually, maybe like a mile or two away, the lady is gone. He looks up and there is a giant plane on top of him <laughs> flying really low. But that's not the alarming part. The plane is releasing some sort of red, something red. I thought it air. was blood. Think like chemtrail vibes. No. I thought it's it like was red blood. red smoke or something. Who knows? Clay's not taking the chance. He U-turns it out of there trying to make sure that his car doesn't get covered in red. Because again, who really knows what this is? He starts U-turning, driving as fast as he can in the up. Where's the woman? I don't think I saw the woman again, actually. Opposite direction, away from the plane. And he's screaming, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And the plane catches up and his car is covered in red. Meanwhile, back at home, George has driven to his neighbor's house by himself. And you know how he was just comforting his daughter that their mother was going to be okay and everything? He probably doesn't really think so. He probably lied to her to calm her down because probably. when he's alone... In his Bentley at his neighbor's house, he looks really stressed out. He takes out his phone in front of his neighbor's house and texts Maya, his wife, but not a single text message is getting delivered. He has no updates on where she is, if she's okay, when she's coming home, nothing. George pulls up to the neighbor's house, the Huxleys, and the house is beautiful, by the way. It looks like a, oh man, I want to say like- The house is beautiful except for the yard. The yard is just dismantled. He said the house is beautiful. There was like some windows broken, like- Stephanie, what the fuck? A 20,000 square foot Rhode Island-esque beach house near the water has its own private beach. But when George pulls up, the entire place is trashed. <laughs> Windows are broken into. There's furniture what? outside the house. Dog crates, suitcases just toppled over in the grass in front. Plotted plants have been smashed. Somebody it either ransacked that motherfucker or just everybody, everybody just had a headache or something. Just start running outside. Looks like a hurricane went through this house, but that doesn't even make sense. They're neighbors. How can a hurricane only hit one house? Exactly. But I think George was expecting that or something because he brought his gun with him, which you don't casually do when you're just visiting a neighbor. He slips it into his jacket pocket, gets out of the car, and he goes to the front door that's already open. He pushes it in and steps in. Squish. The floor of the house is wet. Squish. Hello? Anyone home? It's GH. I let myself in. Outside the house was a mess. Inside is even a bigger mess. He starts digging through the utility closet in the garage and he finds this black plastic briefcase. He pulls it out and opens it up. 
inside is a giant phone, like a brick phone. What are those satellite phones? Do you know what I'm talking about? That you would get if there's like, you need to connect to the satellites. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. He gets the phone out, extends the antenna and steps into the driveway, but still no signal. That's weird. So it's not even just the cellular networks are down. It seems like the satellites are down. Anyway, he leaves the driveway and goes to the backyard of the house and he looks frozen in. This is exactly why I would, uh, I would just go to sleep, take a nap, take me a little nap. You know what I'm saying? Can't really do shit. I'm just going to take me a little nap. Fear or shock? I don't know. But for the first time, we see how close this house is to the ocean. And George looks up to see the seagulls going crazy and he starts walking faster and faster towards the private beach. There's trash everywhere on the beach and we can't really see much but it does resemble the lawn of the huxley home like there's trash everywhere george looks down and there's half buried in the sand a watch that should kill it's really weird who just leaves their watch right (sighs) is this a huxley watch he bends down to pick it up but it's attached to something he pulls it up out of the sand and out comes a severed arm attached to the watch george starts freaking out falls back on the sand and he's flat on his back breathing heavy when he turns to his other side and there is a man in a pilot's uniform dead laying next to him eyes wide it looks like his face is frozen in terror so the arm is detached from the body yeah. What? He scrambles to get up. Oh shit, oh shit. And he starts looking around and there's chairs everywhere. And on them are dead people buckled in as if they're they're ready for a ride. And he looks to the right and there's a giant plane that's on the beach crashed. What? Yeah. Is it his wife? And then bzz, another plane is heading straight towards him he turns and he starts booking it he barely makes it into the huxley house i'm just trying to figure out like i know this is a movie but i kind of want like a movie to like actually like be kind of realistic when they're running away from something run to the right or the left i don't think a plane can really turn unless it's like aiming for you so if a plane is going down this way i don't think running that way is the right thing to do i would run that way or that way you know away from where the plane is going this nigga mahersha ali just ran straight into the house (laughs) when the plane lands on the sand crashing and all of the windows burst with debris again but guess who hasn't gotten the message that the world is ending yet amanda she's too busy being a wine mom and committing microaggressions she's drinking near the pool and ruth is tanning next to her and says you going into the water um no you no i don't think so seems like a hassle why? Because of your hair or? What the heck? Ruth gives her a, what the fork did you just say? More like, I don't trust that one of your kids didn't pee in the pool. Mm-hmm. Which like, side note, kids peeing in the pool is like not really an aggressive thing to say. Like your hair, that comment is aggressive. But Amanda, Amanda looks so disgusted and offended. Like Ruth is so rude. She says, they wouldn't do that. And yet we really can't know, can we? Next to them is Rose's iPad. The screen is frozen during the scene of the show Friends. Your daughter watches the show Friends? Watch is far too weak of a word. More like worships. Why is that iPad still like stuck on that screen after all this time? Like how did that iPad not die yet? There's a lot of things in this movie where I'm just like, how is this this and this isn't this? (laughs) What? Don't get me wrong, I watched it too, but it's almost nostalgic for a time that never existed you know amanda doesn't really say much she tries to change the subject (laughs) i hope the kids didn't wander too far from here and in come the sanford kids they're walking out from the bushes and archie stops oh he looks down and there's a bug attached to his ankle sucking his blood he reaches down and pulls it from his skin throwing it there's like mucus and blood everywhere meanwhile rose spots another deer archie Will you please look? What? What are you talking about? Archie, there's another deer. Look. When he finally looks, the deer is gone. We should go there. Follow the deer. No. That. I'm hungry. Come on, let's go, Rose. He starts walking off and Rose looks up and there's like a flock of geese just flying over them. Mm -hmm. Rose, I said, let's go. Rose snaps out of it and runs inside with Archie. George has now come home and he doesn't even look shaken up. He looks defeated. Like there's no hope in anything anymore. He's sitting there soaking wet in his suit, hands in his lap, staring at Ruth and Amanda. Ruth finally breaks the silence. So dad, are you going to tell us why you're soaking wet? (laughs) 
I fell in the pool. You fell in the pool. I tripped over something. Yeah, I fell in the pool. What were you doing near the pool? I thought you were looking for Rich. Honey, bro, I should have just, like, bro, like, just tell them what's going on. Like, in all honesty, hiding shit from people is not really the best thing to do because when shit hits the fan, nobody, like, nobody's going to be prepared. Like, all this not telling is, like, telling. It's like, do you want us to get, like, do you want us to die? Like, I understand, like, sometimes you don't want to scare people, but, like, bro, some shit is going down. And you need to let people know because if some shit hits the fan, because you're not going to protect us the whole time. Do you mind grabbing me um, a change of clothes and getting me something to wear? I'm afraid this is the only change of clothes I had downstairs. Dr Ruth doesn't want to go, but... Because she can tell her dad is lying, but she has no choice. So she leaves to grab him a pair of clothes. And Amanda is sitting there. And George says, I saw it, you know? What? You saw what? A while ago, before all this happened, I looked at the market and I knew something was coming. What do you mean? In my line of work, you have to understand the patterns that govern the world. You have to learn how to read the curve. Spend as long as I have doing it. It can help you see the future. The curve. It holds study. It promises harmony. It inches up or down. You know, that means something. Jeej, why are you telling me this? Did your neighbor say something to you? No, he wasn't home. But he has a satellite phone I thought could help us. I tried to use it. It didn't work even though it had enough battery. The only reason why it wouldn't work is that our satellites got knocked out of commission. Our satellites? You think something happened to our satellites? The ones in space? Satellites are network computers down here. Uh, so you think the hackers or whatever knocked out our satellites? Don't you think we're maybe getting a little carried away? I mean, maybe you just didn't use the phone right. I saw a plane nosedive out of the sky into the ocean, and it wasn't the first. We see Ruth hiding behind the wall, listening in. I no longer think this is just a couple of teenagers in the Philippines. Amanda sighs, and then there's a rumble. What the f*** was that? It's like the house is shaking. Earthquake. What the f***? Earthquake. And then what sounds like bombs start going off in the distance. The house rumbles again and Amanda starts looking around for her kids. Where are my kids? And then there's this almost frequency, high-pitched noise that's literally so loud, probably emitting from all their devices. And it's really bad. Everyone, Amanda, George, Ruth, they all grab their heads Even to cover me. their ears. But it still hurts. They're literally wincing in pain. But Even me. That shit hurt. It's not just in the house. It's also outside in the woods, too. Archie and Rose, they stop walking and they double over in pain as they're trying to hold their heads together. And side note, Archie has slower reflexes, so he listens to it a second too long. And then we enter into part three, the noise. Everyone's gathered back at the house. Well, mine is Clay. I don't know where Clay is, okay? And just to describe how bad the noise is, one of the windows of the house has a crack in it. It didn't break, but it has a crack. They're all shaken up, and Archie says, I should have covered my ears sooner. Now my head feels weird. Ruth tries to comfort him, and the kids are told to go upstairs while the rest of adults, including Ruth, because she's an adult, they're going to think about what to do next. When the kids are finally upstairs, Amanda whips around to George. Since you're the one with the crystal ball, what the hell was that? <laughs> was that a bomb? A missile? So they're just walking around holding their ears? Well, the frequency stopped. Oh, yes. I, see, I see, I see. Ruth, who has an obsession with power plants, says... Could have been a power plant explosion. Ruth, we don't know anything for certain. Well, you, George, seemed pretty certain a minute ago with your haunting soliloquy. Nothing has changed. Nothing's changed. Everything has changed. And we're sitting here like, like, I don't know what. Is this it's, it's sitting ducks or sitting, yeah, waiting to be shot? I mean, nothing changed in terms of what we do. We wait for Clay to come home and see what he's learned from town. Should I drive to town and look for him? No. We should fill the bathtubs with water. Are there enough batteries and Tylenol and food and the generator and like I, I, one of those like hand cranked radios and a straw that makes it safe to drink water or something? <laughs> I think that we shouldn't do anything until Clay comes back. What if he's not coming back? Ruth tries to reason. My dad is right. We're safe here. So we should just stay here and sit tight. How do you know that we're safe? Oh, I, my God. Julia Roberts, please shut the fuck up. God damn. I mean, when you don't even know what the is happening to us, how do you know? Your daughter's gone. Your kids are gone. Do you Maybe it was like, a, what was that, 10 Mile Island? I mean, there are power plants there, aren't there? Three Mile Island, Island honey. Yeah, maybe a power plant. Why are you so obsessed with power plants? <laughs> You're right, Amanda. Ruth, we should not speculate. Stop saying that. I just want someone to 
fucking tell me what you're thinking. There's the blackout and then you see planes crashing and George goes quiet and glances at Ruth, who's looking at her dad like, yeah, you should have told me that. Why didn't you tell me that? What? You, you didn't tell her about the planes? No, you She's dumbass. an adult, George. You cannot protect her just like you cannot protect me right now. The, the satellites aren't working, the phones aren't working, and then the noise, and then what? What happens next? You die. Amanda, everything I know, I have told you. I don't believe you. I haven't believed you the minute that you walked in through that front door. Golly, I wonder what about us makes you so mistrustful. Mm. Ruth, please. You always think you know what you're talking about, Ruth, don't you? Amanda, well, ain't that the pot calling the kettle black? George is trying to calm the two women down. Ruth. But Amanda has already moved on. She's sitting down now and she says, oh my God, he knew. Who knew? At the market, the town yesterday, there was a guy in the parking lot. He was buying cases of water and canned Kevin goods. Kevin Bacon. He knew this was going to happen. He was buying bacon. Bearded guy, probably wearing an old cowboy hat. How did you know? It's Danny. Danny. He's the contractor I was telling you about that helped with our house. I wouldn't read into it. He's a self-proclaimed survivalist, doomsday prepper. That shopping list was probably a typical weekend for him. I, I, should, I should make friends with some doomsday preppers. I'm ready for the Lord to come back. I'm going to be honest with you. While they're talking, we see the front door open and Clay walks in. His body language is interesting. He's calm. He's not running, just like leisurely walking, but he looks like he's seen a ghost. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, what happened? I was so worried, Clay. Amanda throws herself on her husband. Well, now you're I'm worried. I'm here. I'm okay. Are you okay? Where are the kids? Everyone is okay. Amanda's like, what happened? Did you get into town? Uh, I, I didn't get far, and then I heard the noise. What do you mean? Where have you been? What were you doing? I was going crazy. Why didn't you come? I, I don't know. I just started to drive, and then I heard the noise, and then I came right back. So you didn't see anyone that might help us figure out what's happening here? No, I, I didn't see anyone. <laughs> Clay takes a sip of water, and then he reaches into his pocket and pulls it out. But I, I did Venus. see something. It's a red piece of paper. So the plane was dropping massive amounts of red pieces of paper. His hands are super shaky, and he shows it to the group. Is this a huge um, plane, you know, flying in the middle of nowhere, dr dropping off thousands of these? I have no idea what it says. They all crowd around, and on one side, there's a venomous-looking snake at the front. It's really ominous, and there's venom dripping from the fangs, and the tongue rolls out of its mouth, and it's into Arabic lettering, because, of course, it's Arabic lettering, right? Of course it is. But just you it's wait. It's cool. going gonna, gonna to evolve, okay? Um, the <laughs> Koreans get involved, yeah. Yep. Anyway. Yep, yep, yep. George flips it over, and there's a whole paragraph in Arabic, and they're all staring at it confused. What the hell does this mean? And Archie stands in front of them. He came back downstairs. The sun says... Death to America. They look up and Archie has, what? Death to America. Here, let me see it. I mean, I don't know what the back, the rest of it says, but this part on the snake definitely means death to America. I remember it from a video game that I was playing. I have a feeling like he was playing like Call of Duty or something. Cause I remember, um, I think it was the first Call of Duty where they attacked the White House and, <laughs> and it was like, uh, it was like a war happening in PG County, which was literally where I grew up or where I grew up and where I stay now. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Call, of Duty will t <laughs> Call of Duty will teach you a lot of things. <laughs> They're all silent. Nothing about this makes sense. If they were attacking us, why would they advertise it like this? Because this is something inside and it's not outside. Because how the fuck would they be able to get a drone or a plane over with those messages and not get shot down. But I digress. Death to America is where the Sanfords draw the line. Not the plane crash, but a red piece of paper. I mean, I will give it to them. It is creepy, right? But the Sanfords immediately start packing up their bags and speed packing them into the car in the driveway. Mm. They're like, maybe this shit is only happening on the island, right? So George... George, I mean, who wanted nothing to do with them, he feels like this is a bad idea. I mean, I think that the worst fears have been confirmed. Whatever this may be, it's not good. And I don't think he can in good conscience let them leave. This is the safest place to be right now. But the Sanfords are still getting in their car. And George is trying to explain, like, it's not even English. What's the point of this? Like, let just stay. Leave. There's no point. But they don't care. They hop in their car and they drive off. 
they're speeding away in their family van trying to stay positive they're going to go to their sister's house who's not in the city she lives in jersey but they have to get through the city to get to jersey mm. and amanda's saying if we hit traffic at least we'll be able to talk to some people see if anyone has any information on what's going on it's crazy that we haven't seen anyone yet clay's like i'm sure we'll see someone as soon as we hit the highway Phones could work in New Jersey. The truth is we don't know anything that's going on outside of this island. They could have internet. The phone lines could be okay. We'll look back at this and laugh. You know, I guarantee that. I'd stay in the house. Vacation from hell. Exactly. You know, things get funnier with time. Isn't that what they say? I think they say it a little bit differently. But you know what? I know what you mean, Amanda. <laughs> and Rose is staring out the window. Sirens. Sweetie, what? Sirens. You just hear what sounds like beeping noises. Amanda just kind of ignores it and they pull up onto the freeway or like the lane that leads into the freeway, which is a small two way lane. Right. Just I'm trying to figure out how these people like how do they not think like this is a terrorist attack or something because they're from New York. There's something that says death to America. I would kind of if, if I was a New Yorker or something, I would kind of think like it's happening again. No, am I am I off in that? I don't know. I'm not very patriotic, so it's just like, I don't know. Hmm. Just two lanes. And in front of them, it's jam-packed, bumper to bumper with white sedans. No lights on, both sides of yeah, the street. Teslas. I mean, all white sedans trying to head out of the island into the city. And it looks super congested. Not even congested. It looks like someone parked a ton of identical cars next to each other on the middle of the road. <laughs> what the fork? The fork. Amanda turns to her husband. You stay with the kids. I'm going to go take a look. She starts walking towards the cars. And here's what's weird about the whole thing, right? Why would there be so much traffic out of a small town like this? And why are all the cars so similar? White mm -hmm. sedans? They're Teslas. She walks closer and closer and she realizes they're not all just white sedans. They're all white Teslas. Mm -hmm. And they're all empty. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they're all parked, they're all new. sitting there, they've all slammed into each other. It's a massive pileup of Teslas, but nobody's driving. Maybe they were, and they're lo they're gone now. I mean, we don't know. It's a lot. Of Amanda Teslas. starts weaving through the cars, and Clay is watching his wife from the car, and he's starting to feel anxious. The whole situation is weird. You know what, kids? I'm gonna go with your mom. Stay, sit tight, okay? He hops out. Honey, you see anyone? There's nobody here. Bro, bro, I'm not gonna lie, bro. That scene right there, where you can see the Tesla coming back, like there was like, bro. And that scene was like, do you see anything? And you could just see like a white Tesla just coming. Just like that boat. Bro, I <laughs> I started on TikTok. I was like, damn, bro. I wanted to buy a Tesla. Now I'm not going to buy one now because fuck no. <laughs> but the whole thing gets weirder. She looks down at the cars and they still have their dealership stickers on the window. Why would brand new cars be parked on the road, crashed into each other? These aren't even residents that tried to get out of the island and then left their abandoned cars. They're new cars from the dealership. The mm. license plates aren't even registered. They all just say Tesla. Mm -hmm. They're all brand new. Mm -hmm. What'd you say, honey? They're all brand new. Clay whips around and behind him, there's the sound of another car speeding towards them. Clay is like, oh, whoa, someone's coming, honey. Hello, hello. He starts waving his arms around like one of those stranded island people. Like, you know I wonder if they use, like, did they actually, like, buy these Teslas just to crash them? That would be kind of cool. Like, just using your money for, like, this. This is a cool scene. I like this scene. You know, when you're stranded and you're, like, waving at a plane. You know, right, right. Anyway, um, but Amanda is trying to analyze this bizarre car accident situation, and she keeps investigating, going from car to car, and one of the dealership stickers reads in big, bold letters, Tesla full self-driving capability. Amanda stares back at Clay, then back at the dealership sticker, then back at Clay. Mm. The car that Clay is trying to flag down right at them to save them, a brand new white Tesla. Amanda starts booking it back to the get SUV. In the car. Clay, get in the car. Get in the car. Well, get in the fucking car. Should we talk car. to them? Get in the fucking car right now. <laughs> Clay listens, hops into the car. What are you doing? Shouldn't we flag them down? Maybe they know something. He's being ignored. Amanda does not have time for his shit. Like, keep up, man. Amanda throws the car in reverse, shifts out of way just in time, and she screams, there's no one in the car. And the Tesla crashes into the pile of Teslas in front of them. She U-turns it back into the island to drive back to the vacation home. And the whole time, there's more Teslas flying at them. Yeah, like and one thing is clear, <laughs> there's no way out of the island. And now we enter into part four, the flood. The flood. Ding dong. Ding the dong. door to the vacation mansion rings. George opens the front door to the Sanfords. They look completely helpless. <laughs> George silently invites them in and they just sit in silence around the kitchen for a minute. Amanda says, 
What if we went to a shelter? Does the military have a bomb shelter or a base around here? I mean, do they have to have those things ready for emergencies like this? I don't know where those would even be. Even if I did, you said all the cars came off the lot. If they did that to every dealership, the main roads are likely clogged up. We'll stay here until we know more. How much more do we need? I like how Stephanie missed like the detail of them when they came back and when they left like that pile up. It was like a um well she didn't really miss it, but she she said it was like there's no way out the island. Like all the whole bridge was just covered in cars. Like, that's nasty. That's crazy. Need to know. We're probably in the middle of a war zone. People are likely dead. Just, we need to make a plan. We can't just sit here and do nothing. We need to go somewhere. Clay is like, he's right, honey. It's too dangerous. We stay here tonight, and then in the morning, maybe... Maybe what? Maybe... I don't know, okay? <laughs> The whole group is frustrated with the fact that none of them have a genius plan to get out of this. So they all separate, and at night, shit starts going down again. Ruth goes to the master bedroom to find Clay kneeling by the bathtub. What are you doing? Filling up the tub? That's what they say to do, you know, for water? Water. Do you vape? Not really. I mean, it, it, that's like a marijuana, right? I mean, I, mean, I, know, I know they got uh, different kinds now, like fruit flavors or... Yeah, marijuana. Do you vape? And we still steer clear from them vape pens, y'all. I'm just saying, if you like it, um, I I don't know. I'm not gonna judge you, but like, I'd steer clear from those things. I steer clear from them. Not gonna lie. If you gonna smoke that dope, you just do it the normal way. Some people don't like smoking. If it's legal where you're at. Just be careful, bro. Just don't do drugs. Fuck it. Just don't do drugs. See the two of them sitting outside in the backyard by the campfire and Clay is vaping from Ruth's pen and it's quiet. And Ruth breaks the silence by turning to Clay and says, have you ever f***ed one of your students? Clay chokes on the smoke. Uh, I, I can't believe you just asked me that. I mean, I mean, is that what I look like to you? Like that kind of guy? You look like the kind of guy whom things come easy to, especially women. Well, I guess that's a compliment, I guess, right? No, it's not a compliment. See, y'all see how it's like when I gave her description, like at the beginning, does it kind of make sense? Or am I just like, or just the experiences I have are just like, <laughs> are stuck to me? Like, who the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> the energy is weird. Like, I don't know what to make of it. I think Ruth is good at reading people. So I have a feeling that Clay seems to be this nice husband stereotype, but probably... I don't know. Maybe he's it. sleeping with his, like that girl Maria that he was talking about mm. that wrote the book. The vibes are odd. The vibes mm. are odd. Speaking of Amanda, she's inside the house pouring herself another glass of wine and George is in the kitchen. I always thought of myself as a sophisticated man, someone who had seen the world for what it was, but I have never seen anything like this. So now I wonder if that thing I always thought about myself was a delusion. George, I wouldn't be so hard on yourself. You dig deep enough. George, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> it's probably all a delusion. I mean, take your line of work, for example. Imaginary numbers moving around imaginary money. Personally, I think my business is a lot less complicated than all that. At its most basic, my work is always and has always been about people. Then I feel really bad for you, George. And why is that? Because people are terrible. I mean, f look at the way I treated you. And now we are having a drink together. George lifts his glass and they cheers. I am sorry, by the way, for Fuck what you. I said, did, thought, Fuck it you. didn't matter. I mean, I was wrong and I'm sorry. I forgive you, but it's still fuck you. You know, Amanda, some of my smartest clients have lost a lot of money because they base their choices on preconceived beliefs instead of truth. Seeing the difference is one of the hardest things a person can do. And when they don't, it's got to be maddening, huh? Depending on the person, I might take a little satisfaction in watching the market punish them. <laughs> the scary ones, though, are the ones who don't learn, even after they lose lots, and I mean lots of money. Nothing frightens me more than a person unwilling to learn, even at their own expense. Mm. That's a darkness I'll, I'll never understand. Silence. <laughs> Both of them stare out the window. The quiet is so noisy, you know? It's one of the first things I noticed when we started spending nights here. Found it very hard to sleep. Not like at home where you hear everything, the sirens, the traffic, the people. I miss that. What? The sirens or the people? And the two of them giggle. You know, I'm starting to like you, George. And that's a bold statement coming from me because I can't remember the last time I liked anybody. 
You have a husband. Amanda smiles, but then she starts looking serious again. Why did you really come here? And don't tell me it's because of your knee. That wasn't a lie. I did have knee surgery. I twisted up pretty bad playing basketball. <laughs> but that's not why you came here. Why I, I came here involves something that happened to me a few years back. George starts getting very serious. Okay. One of my clients invited me and my wife to a private event. My client, I won't say his name, but you'd recognize it though. Is he a celebrity? Oh no, nothing like that. But in the business world, he's one of the biggest out there. He deals mostly in defense contracting. I'm talking hush hush, top secret money from the Pentagon. Perhaps the most powerful person I've ever had a meal with. Anyway, we're at this soiree at his house and it's getting late. My wife, she wants to go, but he and I are just having a blast and he doesn't want the night to end. So after a few more glares, my wife agrees to take a cab home. Oof, bet she wasn't happy about that. Mm, not at all. So the man and I were having a few drinks, getting really, really saucy. And at one point, really I don't think that he could stand and I was probably pretty wobbly myself. So he takes me into his study, we smoke a few cigars, and we're sort of that flying high, laughing at almost everything stage. And eventually he starts in on about how much he likes me and how he wishes he could invite me on this trip that he's about to go on. I kind of like how like grown men have like bonding moments. I haven't really like realized this as I was growing up, but like seeing things like these, like hey, let's have a drink, smoke some cigars, laugh about business or whatever the fuck. Like it, it seems kind of endearing, and it seems very warm and welcoming. Like I would, I would like to have those type of moments with, I guess, other men. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it's just something about it. I don't know. Do y'all girls have like those girl moments y'all have, where it's like endearing moments as women? Like y'all just be chilling, but like y'all just be doing shit, and just like you know, just it, it'd be, a, it'd be a good time with just you and the gals. Like if you do have that, like that's what, that's what I mean. Like I, I feel as though like those. Like, if the conversation doesn't get weird or, like, crazy, I would feel like, oh, this is nice. I, I, I could do this. Aside from the cigars. I don't want to smoke no cigars. My dad used to smoke cigars. It doesn't really look very, uh, you know, appetizing. But, hey, if I want to, hey, I don't know. I want to be a wealthy guy. So, if I have to do it, I might puff one cigar, but one puff only. Just one. What, what kind of trip? Where is he going? That's exactly what I asked. And then he turns to me. Actually, I might not puff it. I might kiss it like it's a tip. <laughs> and he says, oh, you know, just my annual meeting with the rest of the evil cabal that run the world. He said the word. Amanda looks kind of scared, but after a few seconds, George stops and he starts laughing. He was that kind of guy, always known for jokes like that. Mm. Again, if I told you his name, you would understand. <laughs> well, I'd just have to take your word for it. <laughs> oh, now you take and your now word for it. Now I feel, excuse me, I'm going to top off my wine. Amanda starts to get up from the dining table, but George reaches across and grabs her wrist. That, I was like, yesterday. hey, bro, I'm not going to lie. That that was weird. That was very weird. Because I don't know, like, why do you, why do, you do that? Like, it was ominous as fuck. Before the symphony, my friend calls me up. No scheduled appointment, just like he usually does. Just calls me out of the blue and wants me to move around some money. And we're mm -hmm. talking some big numbers even for him. Mm -hmm. And as we're getting off the phone, I asked if he wanted to grab a drink tonight. He tells me he's going away for a while. And I joke back at him, oh yeah? You hanging out with your evil cabal this weekend? I thought that was only during the winter solstice. <laughs> but he doesn't laugh. Mm. And he always laughs, even with bad jokes. Mm. All he said was, take care of yourself. Almost as if he felt sorry for me. My guy doesn't even like help him out, like give him some. Quick I would, boy, I'd be like, damn, my nigga. Oh, so you rich, rich. Okay, so you wealthy, wealthy. Were well, you getting away from this shit, huh? Okay. You telling me to take care of myself? I know what that means. Okay. I'm fucked. Like, that's what that means, pretty much. Quick tips, like, come nope. on, man, pack mm -mm. it up. Mm -mm. Like, come Can't on. do that. Nope. Can't Ever do since, that one. I haven't been able to get it out of my head. Are you saying. You think that your friend is somehow behind what happened here? Yeah. No, no, nothing like that. A conspiracy theory so. about a shadow group of people running the world is far too lazy of an explanation, especially when the truth is much scarier. What's the truth? No one's in control. That no one's me pulling up. the strings. Sure. That, that fucked me up. That fucked me up. Hey, bro, I'm going to be honest. Like, if some shit like that actually goes down and we all need to fend for ourselves... I feel like we'll be more fucked than having like the government control all this other shit. 
You know what I'm saying? Because when there's like they we learned this in school, or I learned this, this I learned this in school. Without like order, it's just chaos. And when it's chaos, it's the wild, wild west. You know how the internet was the wild, wild west like a couple years ago before this cancel culture shit came out? It was crazy. It was crazy as fuck. The shit that was being posted before advertisers got all the, the shit that on YouTube that was being posted. Imagine that, but like in terms of people, and there's no laws and no nothing, everything is just Every man for himself. I that's something that I don't really wish to happen. I'm gonna be honest with you. As much as I have my gripes about this American government, I kind of don't want you guys to leave. Cause we're already fucked. So, I mean, y'all might as well stay, right? Like we we already went too far. Y'all might as well just stay. We're we're fucked. Let's just stay together. Come on. Why would y'all leave? Where y'all going? Where are we going? I'm like, what's going on? No, don't leave. Don't fucking leave us. Hell no. Sure. There are those like my friend who might have access to the right kinds of information. But when events like this happen to the world, the best, even the most powerful people, all they can hope for is a heads up. Yep. Sorry. I guess this story is kind of a buzzkill. Yeah, I think I changed my mind. I don't think I like you anymore. <laughs> Meanwhile, upstairs, we have Rose opening the door to her brother Archie's room and she looks exhausted. Rose, what do you want? I'm never going to find out what happens to Ross and Rachel. Archie's fight, coughing now. Oh my god, you're still on this shit? Who gives a fuck? Well, I do, obviously. Why do you care so much about that show anyway? They make me happy. I really need that right now, don't you? If there's any hope left in this f***ed up world, I want to at least find out how things turn out for them. I care about them. Yeah, well, maybe you shouldn't. I'm just saying. You're probably right. The way things are going, you're never going to see that show again. So if I were you, I'd find something else to care about. So that night, the whole Sanford family decide to sleep in the same bed because they're all scared. And Rose and Amanda are the last ones awake. And Rose tells her mom, Mom, I keep thinking about that West Wing episode. There's this story someone tells the president. Wait, you watched the West Wing, honey? Yeah, only that Aaron Sorkin seasons. Anyway, the story was about a man who lived by the river. And he hears on the radio that the river is going to flood the whole town and that everyone should leave. But the man doesn't go anywhere because he prays every day. He knows that God loves him and he knows that God will save him. But then when the flood actually happens, there's a guy in a rowboat and he sees the man and says, hey, come on, I can save you. But the man tells him he isn't going anywhere. Then a helicopter comes flying by and the pilot lowers the ladder, but the man tells him he's not going anywhere. After that, the man drowns in the flood and then he goes up to heaven and he's really angry at God and he tells him, I prayed to you every day. I thought you loved me. Why didn't you save me? And God says, I sent you a radio report, a rowboat, and a helicopter. What more do you want? This is a parable. This is a new age parable. This is a new age parable. Y'all, to all my people who believe in God, hey, I'm just going to let you guys know. Prayers without works is dead, okay? Yes, God will save you. But you got to know, the Lord will send other people to save you, which is him saving you, in a sense. If we're going to we're going to use this as a as a what's it called? This isn't really a sermon, but it's just like I'm just saying this because it's like you would think it'd be like, obviously, if you pray to God every day that he will save you and there's a flood coming. If he sends you a radio signal, that's one sign. If he sends you a plane, that's two signs. If he sends you somebody in a fucking rowboat, that's three signs. You probably don't believe in the three strike rule, but guess what, bro? I don't think God is really going to keep giving you signs if you keep ignoring them, okay? Motherfucker, take the rowboat. I get that you believe in the Lord and everything and you pray. Listen, listen, bro. Um, I don't really think uh, all these magical things are gonna happen. Like the like the um the like the water is just gonna stop at your house. I think that's more you know probably like less probable than someone saving you in a rowboat. You gonna get up to heaven and talk about some? Why ain't you save me, Lord? God probably smack the fuck out you. Like what? <laughs> what are you talking about? I gave you three things. Like what are you do? like? Pretty much what I'm saying is y'all, faith without works is dead. Okay and if, if to the people who believe in God or if you believe in a higher power, if you pray to him and he gives you signs, please use those signs. Please just take those signs, please. Like, please. And, and if you don't take those signs, don't go up to heaven and get mad when God shows you on that big ass LG TV that you an idiot because you embarrassed. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like what, bro? With love, of course. You Rosie, know? What is this about? I think I'm done waiting. 
Amanda doesn't ask any more questions. She just leaves it at that and tries to fall asleep. Downstairs in the in-law suite, George and Ruth are getting ready for bed and they're laying in the bed together and Ruth is telling her dad, I'm scared. It's just us now, isn't it? What do you mean by that, honey? What I mean is if shit goes down, do you trust these people that are in our house? We already know the wife has no chill. That boy was sneaking pictures of me by the pool. That little girl keeps staring into the woods like Donnie Darko and I'm pretty sure the husband wants to f*** me. <laughs> oh. George is looking at his daughter like, be so fuck for real right now. How do you know that? He's not actually going to do anything, dad. He's not that guy. But does he want to? Absolutely. My point remains, I don't trust them. I'm not going to let anything happen to you if that's what you're asking. I'm asking for you to remember that if the world falls apart, trust should not be doled out easily to anyone, especially white people. Even mom would agree with that. Okay. You know... As somebody who's a, a black man, and you know, I make a lot of like, I make a lot of like race jokes, I think, maybe. I'm going to be honest. I don't really feel like that's too, you know, far-fetched of an ideal to say. Because if you think about it, like all this racism shit aside, well, let's just talk as like, I guess, humans. You would think... um, What's more probable? I guess the word of the day is more probable. Um, What's more probable? Trusting your own people, not your own kind, but like trusting your own people who share the same nationality or ethnicity as you or trusting another nationality or ethnicity who has shown that they shouldn't really be trusted when shit, when it goes down. Like, when I'm saying, like, white people and black people, where it's pretty obvious there's, like, a discrepancy between them, you would think, you know, maybe we shouldn't really trust them. I don't know. I think I probably would trust some white folks, you know what I'm saying? But I still have my guard up. I mean, I feel the same way with niggas, too. I be having my guard up with niggas. I love I love my niggas. I love, I love black folks. But sometimes they be on some bullshit. And I be like, okay, well, I got to protect myself. I don't really think it's like, oh, you can't trust white people in times like this. I feel like you can't trust rich people in times like this. Black or white, brown or, you know, whatever. That's what I think. I I think, in all honesty, and I'm going to be honest, what I kind of feel like sometimes is like, um, I don't, I believe this world is more run on classism than racism. But racism is what, um, racism is like a form of class. No, I say, I think classism is the most common thing in this world that just fucks everything up. And of course, racism is like a byproduct of it because if they like, you know, how like a certain race will stop another race from reaching certain things. Well, a certain, no, one race will stop another race from reaching a certain class, which makes it classism. So it's like, it's racism, but at the same time, at the it's all the it's it's just all classism for real, for real. It's pretty much the rich people against the non-rich people. Let's say that I'm not gonna call people poor. It's it's the it's the wealthy on the against the non-wealthy. I feel like I wouldn't really trust rich folk. I don't care if you white or black. I wouldn't trust rich folk. I wouldn't trust them like that in the time like this. You wanna know why? Because rich people gotta save their own ass. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't, I don't know. I feel like I wouldn't really want to like start crying for help and, and stuff like that because I wouldn't think that they would help me and I wouldn't be mad if they didn't help me because it's like, well, I can understand why you wouldn't do that. You got to shave your own skin. It's fucked up. I said this to that girl too when we was watching this movie. I was like, it's fucked up. But like, I mean, I'm not really surprised. Like, people, people got to work, people got to, you know, work on their own stuff. And of course, we can have a conversation in, in the comments. You know, whoever wants to say something. But I kind of feel as though, like, yeah, it's just, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I wouldn't trust white people. I would say, nigga, I wouldn't trust rich folk. <laughs> I wouldn't trust people in a higher class than me because they have, they have a, they have um more information that they won't tell me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, a lot of people have a lot of information that they won't tell. So it's like, you can't really trust anybody for real, for real, so... There's that that on that, but, you know, it is what it is. Sweetie, I got it. Do you? Because we're sleeping in the basement of our own home for the second night in a row. Just what exactly was the point of letting them back in the house? It was the right thing to do. 
And that right there, dad, that's what's going to fuck us up in the end. The next morning, they all wake up and Archie's team. Message. Message. What would y'all do? Would y'all let them back in the house? I wouldn't let them back in the house. I'm going to be honest. I'm lying. I would let them back in the house. I, I would definitely let them back in the house because they're going to be on the outside of my door. If you think about it, like where, where are they going to go? They can't go anywhere else. So the most probable thing that they would do is sleep outside or just start banging on our windows or probably break in. We're in survival mode now. You might as well just let them in, to be honest. Teeth are falling out. Oh, yeah. Every single one of them. He's reaching in there and just pulling them out, like, that one by one. Bop, 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 bop. Hey, I remember when I was pulling my teeth out, cuz, when I was a little kid, that hurt. And this nigga just, ah, 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 my teeth. Like, like, huh? They're falling out. Like, no pain, nothing? No pain. Just mucus, gums, blood, and he's toothless. Toothless. We want to fray here. Is he freaking out? Yeah, or? he's like, my teeth, my teeth. <laughs> my teeth. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. And he's like, what's happening to me? My teeth. They're damn feel tick. weird. I don't know. Yeah, it's a whole thing. So now we enter into part five, the last one. In the living room, we have Ruth and George sitting silently, staring at Archie and Amanda. Ruth is trying to be nice. Uh, how are you feeling, Archie? Besides your teeth falling out, I mean. <laughs> what kind of question is that, Ruth? He's obviously sick. This is Amanda. And Archie protests, no, 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 I'm not sick. My teeth just fell off. <laughs> Archie mutters, this maybe movie it was the fucking... bug that bit me. I don't know. <laughs> what bug? A bug bit me yesterday in the woods. <laughs> are you this laughing? movie is fucked. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Make it sound like and Mike I guess Tyson. everyone is just being super. <laughs> <laughs> my teeth. <laughs> my teeth. <laughs> so they decide that they're going to take Archie to go meet up with the contractor, the doomsday prepper, because he probably has some medicine. What, for oh, teeth? what were they doing the whole time? Exactly. So the plan is, um, uh, the plan is George and Clay are going to take Archie to the contractor. Amanda is going to go look for Rose because they haven't seen her all morning. She's missing. Yeah. I don't know. It's a whole thing. She's missing. And Ruth is probably going to help Amanda look for rose that's the plan that's the plan while amanda and ruth are looking for rose they have like a little bonding moment where amanda fesses up that she's mean to everyone because she works in marketing and like marketing is all about analyzing people and she sees the bad in people i don't know it's kind of dumb she's just mean i don't know what to say yeah, right? like that's not what? really a good excuse it's she's not just a good mean excuse and kind of all. racist but they do have a moment where they amanda does save ruth from a bunch of deer that want to attack ruth bro that's it like the whole thing it was that scene was fucking hilarious <laughs> kind of weird they just so started they're over screaming it. they're fine now and they're still just looking for rose in the woods and they see kind of like these bike trails that lead to a neighbor's house like a red brick house so just keep that in mind meanwhile george clay and the son they arrive at the contractor's house and it looks like a colonial style house right there's an american flag out front a security camera pointed directly at them and out comes danny it's the man in the hat he's wearing like the cowboy boots and everything he looks very american mm -hmm. and george is kind of explaining the situation apologizing for you know bothering you but the world is ending and we just need some um, meds Danny whips out a shotgun. Yeah, I was about to say, talk about the I'm shotgun. I'm going to need you and your comrade to step off the porch and stand by your vehicle. <laughs> Whoa, what? Off the porch and by your vehicle. <laughs> George looks so confused and betrayed, but he does what he's told. What can I do for you? <laughs> We're just checking in on you, Danny, seeing if um, you know anything about what's going on out there. And Archie's in a window. And, and hi, I'm Clay. My family rented from George GH. Uh, We're from the city. Well, that's a lucky break for your family. Imagine what a shit show the city must be right now. I gotta be honest with you, though. I'm surprised you guys are even out. We came out here because my son needs help. Uh, he's vomiting. He's, uh, he's lost his teeth. They fell out. We can't explain it. Ah, it's his teeth, huh? It's gotta be something with the noise. You know something about the noise? Well, it's not dissimilar to what happened to Cuba. A while back, microwave weapons, they call it, produces a kind of radiation that can be beamed out through sound. Some mm. people lost their teeth there, too. Out I'm trying to figure oh, sorry. Side of I'm trying to figure out how the hell do y'all figure this shit out? Who, how the fuck? Like, what? Like, how y'all use weapons like this? I was, I was already um, nervous of how somebody makes a bomb out of a pressure cooker. Fuck, y'all got, got weapons with microwaves? See, Jungkook was right. Microwaves are scary. Damn. Damn. 
that the only other thing I know for sure is there's not a lot of information getting out, so I assume it's a war. The beginning of one, anyway. They've been saying there's a lot of chatter. This has to be what they were chattering about. Yep, 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 yep. Chatter? What do you, what do you mean, chatter? Danny smiles and chuckles. You gotta read the papers deeper than page one, buddy. <laughs> the Russians recalled their staff from Washington. Did you even notice that? Something's afoot. Now, what it is exactly? I don't know. Maybe this is just as much as we're ever going to know. Maybe we just need to sit tight, be safe, pray, whatever works for you. George is trying to get them back on topic. Well, Danny, it's like Clay said, his son isn't doing well. We're going to need more than just prayers. And knowing how primed you are for these kinds of situations, we're thinking you might have some medicine that's going to be able to help him. What I got isn't your business. Jesus. Danny, come on now. It's me, George. We know each other. We're friends. That's the old way, George. You're not thinking clearly. Danny, what are you saying? You're telling me, you're telling this man we're not going to take care of his son? You know what's funny? Danny, I can understand Danny's thought process because if you think about it, say you have, um, say you're a doomsday prepper and it, it's like the it's like the saying when they say don't feed a cat or something, like a cat you see on the street because the cats are going to come back or some shit like that. It's like, hmm. Um, if we help these people out, they're going to just probably keep coming back when all of our help runs out. Kind of don't want that. So we just not going to help them in the first fucking place, which is not really fucked up in my opinion. Well, it's fucked up depending on who you talk to, but it's like, you got to think like, nah, it is fucked up. Cause it's like, bro, everything's going to shit. The best thing you can do is help. But at the same time, think about someone who is giving the help. Like, if you if you already know that people are going to keep coming back, you might as well have them just stay in the house. I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't really be too, I'm not really too, like, you know, opposed from having, like, everybody in the house if I have a big-ass house. Like, everybody just stay in this house. We're going to get everybody, stay calm. I know, where the, I know where the guns are. So everybody stay the fuck calm, but we're going to be in this house. And we just gonna be, we're going to chill. You're going to chill, tell some scary stories and everything. Probably go down to the bunker when the bombs start coming. You know, just you know, just one of, one of them type jobs. You know, I don't know. I like I like people, so I like being around people. So nothing makes a whole lot of sense right now. And when nothing makes sense in the world, you got to do what's rational, and that's protect my own. Yep. What you do, that's your business. I thought I was doing the right thing by bringing them here. Now, if you have some medicine that can help me, Clay interrupts George. Well, we can pay. What do you say? A thousand dollars? Cash might not mean much if the government falls. I think he gave him the thousand that George gave. <laughs> Clay looks confused. Well, well, the whole network's down. My credit cards aren't going to work. There's no Venmo or Apple Pay. I mean, cash might be the only thing that means something, right? Please, my son's sick. He needs your help. He's 16. You're in a difficult position. I get it. I would do anything I had for my family. His hand grips his shotgun tighter. So that's what I'm doing. I'm locking my doors. I'm waiting. I'm watching. And I'm getting my gun. <laughs> Other than that, I don't have any answers for you guys. I'm going to go back inside my house now. I'm going to say goodbye and good luck. Very you American. come out again, you're welcome to stop by. But I can't offer you much more than conversation right now. I suggest you try your neighbors, the Thorns. They did a basement conversion on the down low a while back. No permits or nothing. A buddy of mine worked on it. He wouldn't even show me the plans. Mm -hmm. Now you ask me, that's rich asshole talk for Doomsday Bunker. Come on, Danny, you can't desert us like this. Danny continues smiling. Haven't you been picking up what's going on out there, George? We've all been deserted. All due respect, I would like all of you to get off my property now. George steps forward and he pulls out his gun and he's pointing it. There's like a shotgun, a gun, and Clay is screaming, what the f is going on right now? <laughs> I promised this boy's mother I'd get him some help. The only thing you're helping him is a quick death unless you lower your weapon. <laughs> Lovely dialogue. We'll find another way to the hospital. There is no other way, Clay. Besides, he's not going to shoot us. Danny cocks the shotgun. It sounds like he's going to shoot us. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's bluffing. The fuck I am. Clay jumps in and he's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I guess it works because the next scene we see Clay shaking out blue oval pills into Archie's hand and Danny sitting on his porch smiling. I guess an old fashioned barter system was to be expected at some point. Clay, a what? Like barter a system. barter system where you start trading. Oh, what did they trade? 
money. That's for- like clay whispers. It's still cash, so it's not really a barter system. It's paper. He gave him a thousand dollars for some Advil. What the? Danny's now sitting on his porch, feeling relaxed. Hey, I got another tidbit for y'all, free of charge. What a plot twist! What yeah. the hell? <laughs> All that for what? I don't get it. How did? Okay. Anyways. Danny's like, hey, I got another tidbit for y'all. Free of charge if you want it. It's the Koreans behind all of this. It's Stephanie. Koreans? What makes you say that? Just trust me. It's the Koreans. Or the Chinese. One oh, of them. shit. Oh, God. George looks at Clay and Clay nods. He digs in his pocket and approaches Danny with the red paper. I was driving around yesterday. There was a big drone dropping these everywhere. It means death to America. So we're thinking Iranians. He says it like that. Painfully American. But it has a snake on there, right? Yeah. And it's in Arabic. I, I think know. it's like probably like Voldemort or something. Yeah. And it's probably just like a teenage kid like around. Okay. Yeah. I forgot. I don't know if that's real, but I remember seeing some shit like that. I don't. I don't know. I, I vaguely remember. I think it's from Call of Duty or something. I don't know. Or maybe it's actually some shit that actually came up. But, like, it's obvious that they're spreading misinformation. Because why the fuck? I remember hearing something on NPR once about Iranians' uh, cyber capabilities. Danny puts on his little reading glasses and he looks at the paper and smirks. What's so funny about that? Before the phones went out, I heard from a friend of mine in San Diego about a similar event. Planes dropping pamphlets, except they were in Korean or Mandarin, like I said. He couldn't tell which. <laughs> um, what I actually think about this movie is like when um they're spreading the misinformation. I believe they're spreading that because it's obvious this is fucking misinformation. But I believe that um they're they're like sending out info from well info in disguise of the people that are, I guess, oppressed in that region or the people who are seen as villains in that region. Because I'm thinking of like, okay, New York, the Iranians or however you said it, San Diego, Koreans. So it's just like, this is like, this is to me, this is like grade school fear mongering, which is fucked up because it's like, bro, what the fuck? Like what? The Koreans are behind it. Like, huh? What? What? Are you, what? what are you talking about? What? <laughs> <laughs> but seeing as he did four tours in Iraq, he sure as shit would have known if it looked like this. He hands it back to Clay. We made a lot of enemies around the world. <laughs> Maybe all this means a few of them teamed up. Yeah. George's face of concern grows as if he just put two and two together. So he gets back into the car. And before he drives, he's just staring. I love and this Clay part. is like, GH, what's going on? Before we go, I need to know that you're on the level with me. No matter how far this thing goes, I need to know that we're good. Because if what just happened here is happening everywhere, we need to get to that bunker Danny was telling us about at the Thorn residence. We could, we could just hold this. I don't know if the Obamas are fucking with us with this movie or they're trying to tell us this. But one thing that I know is that they did not make a good movie. <laughs> like, this is just like, this is just like... Uh, what's it called? Like when you put like glitter on some poop. The movie is not that bad, but I'm just like exaggerating. But it's like, hmm, y'all are trying to tell us something, and the way y'all are telling it, it's kind of making me annoyed. Only because like the way they're talking to each other here is one of the reasons why. What are you talking about? You know something. I had a sneaking suspicion, but I wanted information first. All the signs were there. Sure, but. I didn't want to scare anyone. You'd have called me crazy because it was crazy. It would have made more sense if we were on the brink of an all-out invasion. But this? I don't think we'd actually let something like this happen. I thought we were smarter than that. What are you talking about, George? What happened? My primary clients work in the defense sector. I spend a lot of time studying the cost-benefit analysis of military campaigns. There was one pr- program in particular that terrified my client the most. A simple three-stage maneuver that could topple a country's government from within. Mm-hmm. The first stage? Isolation. The cyber attacks. Disable their communication and transportation. Then make the target as deaf, dumb, and paralyzed as possible. 
setting them up for the second stage, synchronized chaos, mm -hmm. terrorize them with covert attacks and misinformation, overwhelming their defense capabilities, leaving their weapon systems vulnerable to extremists in their own military. Without a clear enemy or motive, people will start turning on each other. If done successfully, the third stage will happen on its own. What's the third stage? Coup d'etat. Civil war. Collapse. The Not gonna lie, this is a this is a crazy uh, three-step program, but seems like it's very effective. But at the same time, I'm trying to think, like, one, there's this thing called a universal law where they have to tell you the truth in movies. I don't, I don't know if that's too many. I don't know if that's the truest of things, but y'all could search that up if you would like. And two, I would think if the Obamas are telling us this shit, they're probably telling us something or they're also spreading misinformation about what might happen. But at the same time, I'm just thinking like this seems like the most that would probably happen if there was to be an actual war. Don't really think they would do the, you know, the guns and the mustard gas as they did in like the, you know, back in the day. I kind of think it would be very cyber and they would attack our money. So I would uh, make sense, right? It, it would make sense to me. But also, I don't think that this is really like an inside job for real, now that I think of it. Because it's like, when we when we had that global shutdown during COVID, isn't, is, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't America like still recovering from that shit? I don't really think the, uh, them toppling everything from the inside would be, uh, the best decision. So I don't know. The program was considered the most cost-effective way to destabilize a country because if the target nation was dysfunctional enough, it would, in essence, do the work for you. Yeah. Whoever started this wants us to finish it. And George is rushing to the Thorn residence in the car. Meanwhile, the Thorn residence is this red brick house and the door is bright red. Everything looks normal except for... So the Sanford's house was all blue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This house is all red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the house is all red brick house. The door is bright red. And like I said, every other house in this neighborhood so far looked like that LA or that colonial style. So it's like really red. And even the inside hallways are all red. And the plaque on the door says the thorns. And inside we hear this aggressive crunching noise. And we see Ruth sitting alone at the head of a fancy dinner table eating snacks. Just eating up fucking, all the snacks. Fucking face going to lock she up. She pauses, gets up, and enters the all red hallway. Not a wine red, not a pink red. It's red. Red. It's red as fuck. And at the end of the hall, she sees this steel door. Hope begins in the dark is the sign. It's, got, it's like a bank vault. She starts cranking it and it opens. It's a five inch steel door. I just, I'm just trying to figure out why the fuck, how is she able to get through this house? Why is nobody in this house? Uh, like what is, what is the symbolism behind this? Because we all know the red houses. I was saying, we all know, like, a red house means Republican, and the blue house means Democrat, so, hmm. it's very in your face. She opens it up and turns on the switch. Commodus survival shelters made in the USA. The dial clicks on, and it's like a whole new house in there. It's a bunker. Living room, uh, pallets of those big blue water jugs, dining table, eight seats, a bowl of fresh pears a and fake oranges window. in the middle, a kitchen stocked, um, all the amenities, a generator, paper towels, pots, pans, bedrooms, a sink, and above it is a window that glitches for a second before a screen illuminates and it's a rendered image of like a, like outside. Mm -hmm. It's a TV screen that looks like it's outside. There's plants, like ingrown plants for, you know, veggies and stuff like that mattresses with fluffy sheets there's a washer and dryer a gym equipment a fully rigged electrical system a pantry that looks more like a trader joe's it's insane there's security monitors with a message on there that reads emergency alert white house in major cities under attack by rogue armed forces elevated radiation levels detected by multiple population centers <gasps> seek immediate shelter and rose is standing in the middle of the bunker it's beautiful and one entire wall is filled with DVDs. There's a giant movie theater size screen. And she goes and pulls one out and slides the DVD in. And she sits down and clicks from the menu, the last one. And we hear the friend's intro come on. And she smiles as the screen goes black. 
Okay, so Rose found it. That shit pissed me the fuck off. That really just pissed me off. I'm not gonna lie. That's a that that really just made me mad. Like that ending, just like it's just like. First off, she didn't even say Stephanie didn't even. I don't remember if she even said when um when Rose and Amanda were looking, like um when they were looking for Rose. No, no. When uh Ruth and Amanda was looking for Rose, like Ruth was looking at New York and it, it was getting bombed. Like, New York was getting bombed to shit. Like, it was like nuke, like, kind of type thing. I don't know if she mentioned that. And it's just like, bro, okay, so we go to that. And then we just go to Rose just watching the last episode of Friends while the world is ending. First? Yes, but it seems like all of them are going to get there. Okay, so they're all going to... Yeah. Be sitting in there and oh, okay. yeah. So there's a lot of different ways that people see this movie. Some people see it as just a movie, and they're like, okay, it wasn't like the best movie, and the ending was kind of like, nah, right? <laughs> Some people see it like that. Some people see it as like the Obamas are warning us about what's about to happen. Of course. And then that didn't help because immediately after, like Teslas were recalled, there was like a <laughs> software update that needed to happen, and then like a ship like docked or something. It was weird. <laughs> so then people are like, see, it's happening. And then there was a power outage in New York City. Uh-huh. Right after this movie, 200 people's powers went out. But then people were like, see, it's happening. But then people were like, it's 200 fucking people. I mean, like, yeah, it sucks. But like, it's 200 <laughs> people will be fine. Uh-huh. Time and, is crazy. Um, it's like a whole thing. So some people think this is what's going to happen. And then you have a group of people that think it's already happening. Like, we're all already turning on each other. So, mm. yeah. Like, whoever's doing I feel like both can be true, to be honest. Doing this, this is just like the dramatized version of it. Like, are, we're already turning on each other. So. Mm. And then we're all turning on each other and Rose tinted glasses. So Rose, her name is Rose, and she just keeps looking for the escape like we all do on social media, like just looking for an escape from what's going on in the world. Mm. And it's like the only thing that makes her happy. Hmm. Yeah. And then she is the one that is catching on to all these things, like the deer, the boat, everything. And she's like wearing the NASA shirt. Some people think that it's observant. Some people think like it's ahead of the curve and knows something we don't know. And her brother was wearing the Obey shirt. So it's like the contrast of the different types of people in the population. Like mm-hmm. some people yeah. who are constantly observant and the, the people that are taking a back seat. Got it. And just focused on their smaller scale life events. Why is there so many deers? Oh, the migration patterns were disrupted by something. Because it was birds too. Oh. And the flamingos in the uh Maybe it's pool. also symbolism, like nature will take over or something. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say, you know, it was just... It's a lot. Yeah, it's just a lot. This movie is a fucking mess. I just think it's a fascinating... Like, I am not someone that takes movies that seriously, right? I wish I could be a bit more conspiratorial, but I don't think I... I think naturally, I'm just not a conspiratorial person, right? Man, I am. Listen, this this movie is trying to tell us something, as, like, all these other movies have been trying to tell us something. It, but at the same time, we're fucked. So it's just like, I mean, I don't know. Shit, they can, like... It could already start happening for real. Like, we're not... It's not really too far-fetched, in my opinion. But it's more or less like, what are we What are we going to do? Like, honestly, we just need each other, to be honest. So, However... <gasps> I forgot about this. Like, the reason why... The friends thing. Like, the friends... um, The friends... What's it called? The theme song. In there, it says, I'll be there for you. I don't know if that's like symbolic to something or like the part like, no one told me that life was going to be this way. Clap, 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 clap. Okay, maybe. I don't know. I think this movie was so fun in the sense that you can really dig down so many different rabbit holes and you're going to find a group of people that are so passionate and they think something else about this movie. (laughs) Like people either really hate it. They think it's going to happen. They think it's already happening. There are a group of people that are literally digging down into every single Easter egg. Like there were hidden QR codes throughout the movie. There are certain things that are said throughout the movie, like the red and the blue for the political colors. People are hypothesizing. Is that what that means? And then like one thing that I did read was like in the end, it doesn't matter the political colors because like when the world ends, nobody cares. Like you're going to be down in the bunkers with someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
right so like that yeah. was that could have been a message um some people think the part where george is talking about how they always think that there's like a shadowy group of people that run the world but that's not true mm -hmm. people are like is that the obama's telling us there's no shadowy group of people that run the world <laughs> And like, I think they also be stressing out like us. Like, what? I have a feeling about that. I think there's a couple of not really shadowy people, but it's like people that we don't know that actually like run things. But at the same time, they're also controlled by a conglomerate of people that probably just does certain things. You know what I'm saying? Because if if they all just like get the fuck up and leave and just leave us to our own devices, it's like okay, it's not really a shadowy group, but. There's a group. There's uh, there's obviously a group. There's obviously a group of people that run all this shit. So it's like, I don't know if it's like shadowy. So what's going on? Yeah, and people are wondering, like, do the? I mean, I should look into it. Do the Obamas executive produce a lot of movies? Why would they choose this one in particular? Some people were wondering. It just because the Obamas don't seem like people who pick random movies is what they said, like to just like executive produce. They don't seem like the type to be like, oh, let me just like pick a random book adaptation. They could. Yeah. 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 But it's very interesting. This movie is very fascinating. One netizen pointed out, right, that it doesn't matter where you stand politically. You will have a view of this movie because so some people who think that the end of the world is near they think this is a warning that uh -huh. it's coming yeah. but then the people that are adamant that the end of the world is not near they think that the people that think the world of the the world is ending is getting played by this movie like they're saying like they're getting made fun of in this movie and don't even realize they're getting made fun of but then the people are like no we're not getting made fun of like you're dumb if you can't even open your eyes for a second mm. so it's like it's so interesting. I've seen like literal fights on Reddit. Aww. Yeah. And I have no opinion what I think my opinion on this is. It's just intriguing because I haven't seen a movie recently that has caused this much in-person discourse that's passionate. Because hmm. usually it's like, oh, the movie's good. The movie is bad. You don't like the movie that I liked? I'm mad. Do you, does this leave you with any lasting feelings about the world and the future? Or not much? You're like, eh, that's cool. Um, yeah, it makes me not want to go to New York City as often. Not real shit. <laughs> um, about the world in the future. Because, you know, like, when I watch these um, end of the world type of movie, yeah. like the movie Don't Look Up, that was a good one. That was good. And then the even All of Us Are Dead, Yeah. that show. Remember, I was like in my little world. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit, babe. This brings so much perspective and uh, feelings and... Yeah, I liked the part where they all make up in the end mm. and they all kind of come together because it gives you like it's really grim, but at least it's still hope that regardless of race, political affiliation, like when mm -hmm. the world is ending, I guess humans are just humans. I'm going to be honest with you because I don't think that's the case. I f I'm going to finish it. Okay. Right. Okay. And we'll be hopefully in the bunker somewhere. Actually, no, I'm going to say this. I'm going to be honest. If this was more real, they would have killed them. Like if we like if we're being honest, like of course in the movie you gotta have like a you know a nice little end story. But if this was like real life, and someone is that scared, a lot more people probably would be dead. Like if we're being honest, either Clay or my opinion, I think either Clay or George were gotten to get shot the fuck up, or fucking uh, what's it called? Um, Danny would have probably got shot the fuck up because. Niggas aren't that calm when it's when it's like actually like when the survival mode is on. Nigga, if there's guns pointed at you, that you're gonna blow that hoe. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's not. Mm -mm, it's this is this is nice. This is pretty much nice in my opinion. Looking around, watching friends, watching, friends. watching this video. I'll be watching K-pop. <laughs> damn, those were the good old days, wasn't it? Now we're in a bunker. <laughs> what do we do? Those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Please leave it in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought about it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Okay. This is, you know, in all honesty, I do love uh, watching Stephanie talk about things. And I'm so glad that I watched this because I needed to speak about this damn movie. I did not like this movie. I liked a couple things in this movie. Um, but, like, I, I don't know what it is. I watch a lot of uh, end of the world movies. Or, like, I like a lot of end-of-the-world movies. Like, my favorites are um, This Is The End, 2012. I think I didn't really like Armageddon like that. 
I liked Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up was cool. That's only because, like, I just, I'm ready for the Lord to come back and just, you know, do other things. But, like, back in the day, like, when I saw 2012 for the first time, I was terrified. I actually thought the world was going to end and everything. Even when they said the world was going to end that one day in, like, May of 2011, it was, like, May 23rd, 2011. Like, there was also a billboard about the world ending. And I, we were, we were like, where were we at? Me and my family were on, like, vacation somewhere, or we were just, like, out. And I was just looking at the screen. I was like, well, if the world ends, I would like to see it. I made my prayers and everything, and nothing happened. I was mad as fuck. And ever since then, I was like, damn. Well, obviously, we know that we know the world. We won't know when the world ends. We won't know. You know, if you read the Bible, we won't know when the world ends. But, like, in a sense of this, um, with the online discourse and everything, I kind of feel like nothing bad is really about to happen for, like, the next, say, like, what, five or ten years, for real, for real, for real. Maybe some cyber attacks or maybe, like, little things. But I kind of also feel as though, like, if we're being real, I feel as though, like, we're just being slow roasted right now. Like, it's like a slow burn. It's just, a, it's just, a, it's going to be a slow burn. And when shit hits the fan, it's going to hit at one time. And then we're all going to be like, damn. Damn. Like, I just feel what it is. Like, I just feel like that's what it is. That's why I'm like, I, I would like to enjoy the time that we have and stop worrying about the damn future. And just worry about the relationships we have with each other and just enjoy the time we have with each other because time is minuscule and we time is finite. You know what I'm saying? It's not really, a, but also ha- having discourse online is actually kind of fun when people aren't getting doxxed and getting yelled at and getting just like told that they're less than human. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I don't know what you guys think. I have a feeling that some of y'all have not actually seen this movie. I would say watch this movie. Uh, and just come with your own like interpretations and everything. I would say watch the movie, come back to this video and comment whatever you would like. Y'all just let me know what you think about this movie in the comments. I really don't like this movie. So <laughs> it is what it is. But at the same time, I also want to ask you guys, what do y'all think about the world ending? Do y'all think the world is going to end? And if you think it is, what do y'all think how the world is going to end? And what are you going to do if the world ends? I'm going to be honest with you. I'll probably be streaming or I'll probably be watching some K-pop videos or a K-drama or something or eating or sleeping. I'm just keeping a stack because at the end of the day, it's like, what can we do? I'll pray. And if the signs are there, I'll use the signs and just use what the Lord gives me. But at the end of the day, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. Shit. I ain't leaving without a fight, though. You heard me? I'm trying to think about, like, what type of fit would I have on? For the end of the world. I gotta have like an end of the world fit. I should go be fire. End of the world fit? I gotta have a haircut and everything just so, just so things look cool. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, nothing else fucking matters. So, it is what it is. But at the same time, I hope you guys have a good day. Um, This is probably going to drop at like 7 in the morning. So, hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you guys later on stream. Bye. Love you.